on the right side. And wow. cut it inside. Looks now for the end zone. I mean, you're better off just rolling it down the field the 40-yard line than kicking a line drive to number 15. Salcido in motion. Snap taking heating. Going to throw down the seam. He's got Coleman in the end zone. Touchdown. I love it. Eric. Look out. Off to the races. Matt Morrison. Blitz up the middle. This one intercepted. Oh! Picked off at the flat. It's Lynch. On the road, down by a point. Capetta calls his own number, takes the plunge, and ends up in the end zone. Four-man rush. Throws across the body, looking for Peters. He's got him on the run. The holder is Sabati. It's clean. The kick is up. Good. And good. Well, hello everyone and welcome here to Nashua. Nick and Ask this Steve Beals with you. It's our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week presented by Beals Insurance. A preliminary round playoff matchup here in the 2023 NHIAA Boys Football Division I State Tournament. Bishop Curtin and Dover in the 8-9 spot. The winner will take on top-seeded Pinkerton on the road next weekend. Well, both these teams <coughs> highly competitive throughout the regular season. Bishop Girton hoping to make another trip, which would be their third straight to the quarterfinal round with a win tonight. First year head coach Anthony Nalen had his team playing perhaps their best football at the end of the regular season as they rattled off three straight wins. Mm -hmm. And have not lost since they played Pinkerton back on October the 6th. Three straight for the Cardinals. A win at Keene, a win over Goffstown, and then a win here at Stello Stadium at Nashua South. On the other side for Dover, a strong start under head coach Eric Kumba. They were tested in week number eight on the road against Concord. Had to go to overtime to top the Crimson by a point, 28 27. They lost a week ago at Exeter in the finale by a final of 16 to 7. So all in all, the Green Wave with five wins, three losses, and an out-of-state tie mm. up in Maine. So this one, Steve, at least on paper, promises to be perhaps the most competitive of the first round contests this weekend in Division One. Yeah, there's so many variables, Nick, that come into this game to say what motivates the team, what doesn't. Uh, are they coming in on a high note? You know, w w that loss to Exeter, it, it, it could have an effect that pushes them into, you know, Dover, that, that, that being Dover, uh, pushes them into a, a situation. But, you know, w when you really look at it, um, I feel is though you can use that as a motivating factor to kind of get you playoff ready. And a lot of that depends on how the week of practice, uh, the week before uh, this past week uh, goes. On the, uh, on the uh, Bishop Girton side, they're home, Nick. They're on their home turf. Uh, both of these teams have uh, good quarterbacks. Uh, Ryder Aubin uh, is a prolific uh, a passer and runner, uh, clearly on the short list of, uh, of the best quarterbacks uh, in the league. Uh, as is Mike McDonough, same situation. Mike McDonough and uh, Samansky, the, 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 that battery there leads all kinds of, uh, of uh, r you know, uh, statistics across the state, Nick. Uh, and, and, and when you look at these two teams, you've got to believe or you've got to go in thinking that as long as they get protection, uh, there's going to be a high-scoring game. Uh, it, sometimes it doesn't work out that way. But... Going into it, you got to believe this is going to be a couple of gunslingers shooting it out, but, and I think a big part of this game comes down to the kind of protection that their offensive lines are able to provide them and uh, whether or not each of them can obviously, as always, get the running game going to open up those passing lanes uh, with, with better coverage packages that, that they can throw to. But they can both get it done. Uh, we've been talking about this game uh, all day, uh, last four or five hours. We've been talking back and forth about the kind of variables that go into it. What 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 is, is this game going to live up to its uh, its, its potential? Um, I'm going in with it is and uh, uh, hard to predict who will come out victorious uh, uh, today. But 
here we are. And both of these teams, as you said earlier, Nick, have proven uh, that they can get it done when they need to. If you look at the records, you look at uh, Pinkerton, a loss to Pinkerton by Bishop Girton, a tough one. Uh, and you look at uh, uh, the loss to Bedford, uh, another tough one. But the only other loss was to Nashua North, and that was 21-17. Mm. So look at Dover, same situation. Lost to, Plym to, to Portsmouth, an undefeated team. Bedford, undefeated team. The Exeter game still looms large, Nick, as we look at that game and wonder where is this team right now. All right, when we come back, pregame festivities as the crowd continues to file in here. We will have the live rendition of the National Anthem performed by the Bishop Girton Marching Band. Coin flip, and then game time at the top of the hour. All that on the other side of the break. You are watching our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week presented by Beals Insurance. Our broadcast today, as it always is, is brought to you by Beals Insurance Agency, with locations now in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance will get you both the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Just call 603-471-9999 or visit BealsInsurance.com to request a free quote and start saving money today. Again, that's BealsInsurance.com. How can you reach your team's fundraising goals at no risk and no cost? MG Sports offers a variety of products to make your team's fundraiser a success. Their products include tickets and discount cards to hundreds of local businesses. MG Sports now is a digital platform where athletes can raise funds in the comfort and safety of their own home. Don't waste another season. Raise more funds than ever before and become another football program in New Hampshire that sets fundraising records every season. MG Sports, fundraising made easy. Visit MG sportsfundraising.com to start raising money for your team today. The New Hampshire Tomahawks promote the highest level of club lacrosse competition, not just in the state, but in the country. Looking to get recruited? Director Chris Cameron keeps an open dialogue with the nation's top college lacrosse coaches. Over 400 New Hampshire Tomahawks alumni have played at the college level, including the ACC, Big East, Big Ten, Ivy, NESCAC, NE10, and more. New Hampshire Tomahawks coaching staff has over 100 coaches, including current high school varsity and college coaches. The Tomahawks offer training for players of all ages, clinics, camps, and leagues, along with spring, summer, and fall elite teams. So play with the best. The New Hampshire Tomahawks, showcase and development for college lacrosse. Visit NewHampshireTomahawks.com and girls.nhtomahawks.com. Hey, I'm Chad, the owner of New Hampshire iPhone Repair. We're New Hampshire's most trusted and affordable repair shop for your iPhone, iPad, iPod, and even Android needs. Don't worry, we're affordable, reliable, and we back our parts with a lifetime warranty. And do you know what the best part is? No, what? We can repair your phone while you wait. I know, that's why I'm here. Oh, I know, Mrs. Green. Here's your iPad, good as new. Bring your phone into New Hampshire iPhone Repair today. Buy local and save big. For over 26 years, Spectrum Monthly has been providing great local offers from businesses in New Hampshire and Massachusetts. Delivered to your mailbox every month, Spectrum is chock full of savings from your favorite businesses. From local restaurants and retail stores to entertainment, fitness, and home improvement services, you'll have easy access to thousands of dollars in savings, including exclusive offers for Spectrum readers. Every month, enter our readership contest for a chance at winning cash and local gift certificates. Spectrum Monthly, no one brings you better offers. Well, back here at Stello Stadium, Nick Anastas, Steve Beals with you. It's our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week presented by Beals Insurance. We get a live look in the tunnel. It's Coach Nalen and his staff getting ready, putting the final preparations, final touches on the preparation, and the team set to emerge momentarily. Our second broadcast today here from Stello Stadium. Earlier, saw Nashua North. Flex their muscles yes. in a 27-14 win over Alvern. So they will advance and take on Portsmouth coming up Friday night. The winner of this game, as we know, will head to top-seeded Pinkerton next weekend. There are the Bishop Girton Cardinals, the number eight seed tonight, the home team. They're in their green uniforms with the gold helmets and lettering, the white pants. One of my favorite uniforms, if we're being candid. Statewide, got the Green Bay Packer logo on the side of the helmet. And that, they look like they're all business tonight. And that man, uh, Coach Nalen, we've had him on Gridiron, Nick. And uh, absolutely, uh, you, you can't take away what he's done this year. 
uh, you can see the improvement in this football team. Very much as we saw with Nashua North today, they have a, an improved football team. So, uh, but uh, where is Dover and BG on that scale? Never met at any time this year. Kind of like these games to watch the matchups as they develop. But uh, Coach Kumba and Nalen, uh, accomplished coaches that have got their teams in the playoffs, just when are they going to peak and which one at what time? Coach Nalen, of course, his first year as head man. Made his way up from Lunenburg High yep. School south of the border in Massachusetts during the offseason, replacing departing coach John Trishiani Jr., who spent four years on the sideline with the Cardinals. Of course, Coach Kumba has been there for a while now. And as you mentioned, both teams with different schedules, different yep. conferences, different ends of the state geographically here. But here they are. Meeting in this 8-9 matchup with, again, a trip to the Astros on the line. It's gone chalk so far. The higher seed victorious in all yep. four first-round games earlier this afternoon. One to go. And if, if Bishop Girton comes out uh, victorious in this game, then you're going to have five out of five, the higher seeds. But I think we both agree this is probably lined up ahead of time, at least, to probably be... Uh, anticipated as the best matchup of the five games uh, to go. So, all right, looking let's forward head to it. down to the field where the Nashua, I'm sorry, the Bishop Girton marching man is getting set to play the national anthem. Mm-hmm. And tonight, folks, our officials for the evening are referee Jeff Kleiner, linesman Gary Finkel, umpires Roland St. Germain, Line judge, Mitchell Master Mateo. Back judge is Nick Ryder. And the clock operator up in the booth is Bill Melanson. Thank you, gentlemen. Well, it appears like the coin toss is going to take place first. Every game has its own schedule. <laughs> we'll have the national anthem shortly after that, so we'll stay on the air here. Steve, we've got about a minute or so. Yep. Your, your keys tonight for both teams. My, my keys tonight are uh, uh, both quarterbacks uh, getting protection. That's the number one key. Whatever quarterback doesn't get good protection, I think it's going to be an uphill battle to win the game, Nick. You could argue that any game, but I think in this one, given the fact you got a couple gunslingers. Second thing that I would say, obviously, Nick, ball security, and then ball security when you're own, in your own end is going to be critical as well because if there's everywhere, anywhere where you want ball security, it's when you're in their red zone and you're inside your red zone. That's where ball security is going to be key here. Um, the, the last uh, a key that I would put to this game is the, is, uh, is the receivers. Um, I understand Chimilecki won't be playing tonight. We're going to find that out when we see all the, the, the players out on the field. I've been looking. I understand that. But they still got Samansky and a good supporting group on the BG uh, receiver core. Um, my understanding, Dover is loaded up. The, the, their receivers are all healthy and ready to go. And then the, the last key is going to be the, 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 what you see on the field tonight is going to be a reflection of what has happened the past week. And I think uh, it, the, the team that's, uh, that's ready to go tonight and going to be victorious, a big piece of that will go into the sort of preparation and where the, where the, the body, mind, and spirit is going into this, uh, this game tonight after having uh, – you know when you've had a good week of practice and when you haven't. Who's on? All right. Tover is going to receive. BG will kick. I would imagine BG will take that. It seems to be where it's headed, right? It's almost you need to win so you can defer. I wonder if Coach Kumbo would would want his team to get the ball. Offense has been sputtering a bit, only seven points a week Mm -hmm. ago against Exeter. They scored that touchdown early in the game and then were kept off the scoreboard the remainder. Might want to get that monkey off the back. That's a really good point, Dick. And the other thing is, remember, they played Exeter, only scored seven points, however... Exeter and the and Dover know each other so well, right. where they played each other during the year and they played each other a thousand times. Otherwise, the coaches know each other, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So looks right. like we're going to the anthem. Now we're time. It's time for the national anthem.
Thank you to the Cardinal Marching Band. Also, thank you to our members. Well, there they are, the Bishop Curtin Cardinal Marching Band, doing a great job. Nice job. With the national anthem here at Stello Stadium. A cool night, temperature falling towards the 50 degree mark as we approach game time here, 6 o'clock Eastern. The sun has just about set at this point. Foliage, as we talked about earlier, in full bloom. Beautiful sky. One of Beautiful the best sky. backdrops here in the division. All right, BG will kick off, getting a final word of recommendation from the coaching staff as we see there on the home sideline. Dover. Led by the explosive senior quarterback, Ryder Aubin. We'll have a chance to strike first as they set to receive here to begin the game. We do have five officials here tonight, which is good. Referee Jeff Kleiner is the head of the band, head of the officiating crew, I should say. And a good-sized crowd, a growing crowd, as folks continue to file in here to Stello Stadium. The BG parents always do a great job providing the atmosphere, Decorating the stands with balloons, homemade signs, yeah. etc. You know what BGs feel for the next three hours. That's right. Dover, though, they made the trip from the coast early. And there's a sizable yep. green wave supporting uh, supporting fans over there on the far side field. All right, here we go. We've been waiting all afternoon. Kicker will be Connor Lennon, the senior. And he's going to start it with a squib. It takes a high bounce at the 30. Handled at the 25-yard line by Dover's Sincere Bailey. And Bailey wow. found a seam. Gets all the way up near midfield before it's all said and done. Tackled at his own 49-yard line. Good starting field position here for Dover. Wasn't looking to go down there, Nick. He uh, he was drive. Watch him drive these legs. Good small steps. As soon as he feels contact, immediately goes into that drive mode. Look at that small step. Nice job. BG hanging on. Uh, boy, I'll tell you, if he didn't get his uh, hips wrapped there, he might have been gone. So that's a great start uh, for, uh, for Dover there. Good field position. Tackle there by the sophomore, Alex Dolan. All right, so here is the quarterback, Ryder Aubin, one of the passing leaders in Division I on the short list for the Yukika Player of the Year. It's a double handoff. Then they go back to the quarterback. Aubin's going to fire, and this one is incomplete. Wow, it's a good thing Aubin got all got it all, Nick, because if that thing fell east even a little bit short, that was in the hands of the uh, BG defender. That's Sam Franco. Sam, the yep. Senior was in good position there, yep. batted away. So a little trickery yep. out of the bag early here from Coach Kumba. Coach Kumba is an offensive-minded guy, obviously appreciates all phases of the game. But uh, when he's got a quarterback like that, uh, you, there's all kinds of things you can do. And they gave him protection. Three receivers set against the four-man front here on second down and 10. From the Green Wave 40-yard oh. line, hard count. And it looked like a couple of Cardinals jump as the flags fly. Yeah, d discipline. And we're going to hear very shortly from our referee, Jeff Kleiner, for the first time tonight. Yep. Encroachment. Encroachment. It's against BG, so the first penalty against the Cardinals. Comes here in the first 15 seconds. Dover, no, they're moving right along here. They're, they're very willing to keep the tempo quick. You got a wing back to the far side. Aubin in the pistol, takes a chest high snap, throws to the right on second and five. It's too strong. Incomplete off the fingertips of the tight end, Bryce Carberry. Yeah, Bryce has got to run that route full speed, Nick. That's designed to get, to stretch it out. And I would not say he was going full speed there. Uh, Ryder obviously looking to do it. Sets nicely. Yeah, I mean, he, he really want to get that timing uh, route at this point in the season. So third and five early. <clears throat> Cardinals hoping for a stop. Dover looking to extend the opening drive. On the BG 46, back to throw, airs it near side, and that one is incomplete as well. Trying to find Brady McGinnis, yep. one of these seniors, down the sideline. But again, the pass gets away from Aubin, and Dover's going to punt here early. We've been following Brady since he was a sophomore. Uh, coming up through the ranks, we've done the uh, gains in Dover, and when Dover was away, and uh, always impressed me. Uh, when we saw him out there. so But there does seem to be a little bit of a timing route on all three of those passes, Nick. Uh, look to be a little bit off. But uh, they'll have probably another chance, obviously, to 
get that worked out. What does Girton do here? Oh, oh bad boy. snap. <clears throat> Trying to escape to his left is I Wood, and the sophomore going to be chased out of bounds where? At about the BG 47-yard line, so a costly, faulty snap. It's going to give the Cardinals great field position here to open up on their first possession. It'll be first and 10 from the Dover 47-yard line. I thought when you asked me about the keys to the game, I'd kind of lay off the obvious things, Nick, and the obvious things are the things that are actually coming in. I was trying to get a little cerebral about it, and uh, it really comes down to the fundamentals and basics right already. So here's what BG does. They'll spread it out, two receivers each side. And the running back is the veteran A.J. Holmes. They fake to him. They throw oh a boy. slant. And that one's incomplete, intended for the senior wide receiver, Ronan Ballesteri. Yeah, that looked to be, it, uh, we'll see in the replay, it looked to me to be a pretty good pass, Nick. Went right through his hands, it looked like. I don't know, but boy, I'll tell you, he's got a gun. Yeah, went right through his bread, right in the bread basket there. Ballesteri, one yep. of the veterans, multi-year starter, very sure-handed usually. Usually, yes. Took his eye off that one, so but second down and ten. McDonough looked like he was right on in, in, in that situation there, Nick. All right, two stacks here with the receivers spread out on each side of the line of scrimmage. Dover's going to bring heat off the edge. The throw is over the head of Ballesteri and incomplete, so McDonough starts 0 for 2, and now a third and 10 is on the way. Now, both quarterbacks sailing uh, those uh, out patterns, Nick. Well, sometimes we see that early in games. Little jitters, little jitters, just kind of settling down. A lot of energy. Yep. So it may be a matter of who settles in first. McDonough going to try to keep the chains moving here on third and ten. Takes a look at the wristband. He's got a few plays written down there on that left forearm. Third and ten. He looks to his left. He's got a clean pocket. He's going to fire, and a catch is made for a first down. That's his go-to guy, Cody Zeminski. Led the entire Division I in receiving yards this season. Gets open there for a 12-yard pickup. Watch how, my, uh, how McDonough waits for just the right time to throw. They give him a nice pocket. He knows he's coming inside, and just the timing of that is everything. Extremely difficult for a defender to, to cover that, Nick. What a, what a great job between the two of them. And the offensive line, we talked about that. Who's going to get protection? Well, he got it there. First minute in the books here at Stellos. BG. The football at the 32-yard line of Dover. They face a three-man front, four on the rush. McDonough steps up, looking for the end zone. That one tipped away at the goal line. Yeah. It's a good play, good timing there. That's the freshman, Steve, Amari Lewis. We've talked about him, two-way player already at the varsity level and one of the better all-around athletes for you're Coach gonna, Goomba. You're going to see it right here. That's just good timing. Looking back, but yet maintaining tight coverage and looking back. That gives you the best opportunity to defend. It's risky because if, if, the, if you're beat, it, you, you can't tackle. But he knows what he's doing. He's a great athletic ability, as you said. Second down and 10. Cardinals have gone to the air on every play so far, and that one is incomplete. Hit as he threw. Good pressure off the edge there. Sincere Bailey timed it well. And McDonough lucky to get that one off, third and ten. Yeah, Bailey clearly a, a guy to watch. He's on tonight, Nick. He's just got a great acceleration. You can tell he's in great shape, great athleticism. And uh, Mike was lucky that uh, he was able to get that pass forward. Uh, very close. Yeah, very close. To a live ball there, but it's ruled incomplete. Now third down and ten. Ball at the 32-yard line of Dover. Green wave with three down linemen. McDonough comes near side. Zemanski a two-hand grab. Wow, Turns to his right, breaks a tackle, and he's inside the 20 for a first down. They are lethal. What a connection they are, Nick. It almost seems you can tell the ball. They're, they're, it's cool. The ball's hard. And uh, the, 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 uh, the cold air that really haven't had that yet. We've seen it first time, but... How about Szymanski with that inside-out move? Good athletic receiver move. Very Randy Moss-esque. And Sam Gruby, the safety, may have saved the touchdown there with the That's tackle. a compliment, right? Randy Moss? Wow. What a player. First and 10 at the 16, and now an audible comes in, it looks like, for yes. Coach Nalen. I haven't believed they've run it yet, have they? Everything's no. going to pass. It's been through the air exclusively. I think you're going to see it here. Nope. Yeah, they, yes. fake it. they go up the middle. McDonough finds an opening, and wow. he finds the end zone. Yeah. It's a touchdown. A 16-yard run 
by the senior Mike McDonough. It's going to put BG on the board first, 6 nothing. Nick, the way that hole opened up, it almost looked like a cross block. I'm not sure if it was or it was just an inside and outside seal. But watch the, watch the line that opens up come through. It is a cross block. That a, what a terrific job of, uh, of blocking there. And as always, Mike McDonough, McDonough does a tremendous job of waiting. Great sell on, on the fake. Comes up through it. You could have driven a freight liner through that hole, Nick. What a terrific job. Well, the snap was low, but a good hold saves the extra point attempt. And that one is booted up and in from Connor Leonard. So, 7 nothing. BG, they find pay dirt on their first run attempt of the night. After throwing, what, seven or eight passes to begin the drive, they keep it with McDonough. He goes up the middle for a 16 yard Look score. Look at the cross block right there, Nick. Number 68, and I think it was 70. Was it 71? 68 is Dominic Grand, the yeah, sophomore. I, I couldn't tell who the other one was, but terrific job offensive line. Here we go. 50. Yeah. That is a cross block. Uh, that is how it's supposed to be done. And your quarterback runs through the hole. No one even touches him. Boy, is that how you want it when you've got a quarterback of this caliber. That's an impressive-looking drive by BG, Nick. Clearly, the passing game is they're getting the getting the rust and the dust off, and uh, Coach Nalen should be pleased about that. Starting off with a seven nothing lead to open. Eight plays, forty seven yards yep. officially. Yep, capped off by the sixteen yard touchdown run by the quarterback. So BG out in front early in front of their home fans. Less than two minutes off the clock, seven nothing. Well, to me, the offensive line of BG has improved, Nick, as the year has gone on, and. That's just going to make this this uh, passing and running game that much more lethal. We'll see what Dover can do now. Wood, one of the up men, is going to return the kick. Took it off the bounce. And gets over the 40 up to about the 43-yard mm -hmm. line. Pretty good return. And favorable starting field position here for the Green Wave. Drive yep. number two. Yep. First one sputtered around midfield. Had a bad snap on the punt. That set up a short field for BG. The Cardinals able to take advantage. BG, no interest in kicking deep to the uh, primary re uh, returners, uh, Nick. Looks to me like they're more than happy to just punch it down. We'll take the 35, 40-yard, 50-yard uh, positioning. That's trust in your defense. But I think that their concern is they don't want a kick returner taking it to all, all the way to the house. And um, we're seeing that more and more and more throughout time where you have to respect those best athletes when they're on special teams units. Well, that's the old... Brian O'Reilly's strategy, right? He told us very candidly, can't figure out why you would want to kick to the other team's best athletes. Yeah, did you see him smile when he, as he was talking about that? You could see it was like someone handing him a strawberry, uh, <laughs> a strawberry lollipop there, and he really went into it in depth about the significance of allowing and the percentages that work in your favor by right. not allowing the best athletes to beat you. Meanwhile, a little powwow there on the far sideline. Referee Jeff Kleiner addressing something. Seems to be in the rear view mirror now. So Dover set to go on first down and 10. Of course, speaking of Coach O'Reilly, the Astros, the top seed in this year's D1 tournament, await the winner they of this it. game. They earned it. Never lost. Out of the pistol. Aubin going to hand off. I believe that was McGinnis. And it was. Doesn't get much. Up to the 45. Just a two-yard stop. Two-yard gain. In on the stop. For BG, Sam Fox, one of those <clears throat> wily veterans up front for Bishop Girton, the nose tackle. Second down and eight. <clears throat> and another pistol look on the way here with two receivers, strong side, near side. Right, they bring him four man front, bring him up. Fake the pitch. They keep it with Aubin. He bounces to the right side. He's got a first down. He's inside the 40. He breaks a tackle at the 35. And somersaults down to about the 33-yard line. That's what a pretty good looking run. What an athlete. Got some good blocks off the edge that he could follow. But watch how, in, a, in precision fashion, he follows these. See him? That's what you want to see. First opening up the field on the line. You turn up into that, then you X out. And that's exactly what Ryan did. What a terrific rider did. What a terrific run. Such a smart player. You always take that first hole, a first crack you see, then kick it out. Senior Textbook line. run with good blocking. Senior linebacker Sam Ronzio with the stop. It's a gain of 23. And the longest play from scrimmage either way so far. They run the same play. Aubin, first down and then some. Tripped up at the 20. Rolls down to about the 16. 
And I don't see any flags. Yeah, oh, there, there is, is a flag out yep, there. Down yep. at the 23-yard line. So a penalty on the play, and based on the body language, it looks like it's against Dover. Yeah, this is uh, this is not good for Dover, Nick, to take out that momentum at this time. You got Ryder Robin feeling good about what he's doing on the running game. That's going to open up all kinds of passing, and I think it was I, I don't I don't know, but I think it was on number 16. If I had to guess here, watch 16 on the far outside, and he's got hold he's got he's holding on the side of the jersey. Boy, that's a tough call. Not much there, but I mean, they, they everybody holds every play. I mean, there's to a certain extent, but uh, that's that's a painful uh, penalty to take if that's in fact the one, Nick. Right. But that's the only one that I saw. And that's the freshman Benjamin Allen. Yeah, that was a couple of freshmen, as we mentioned, getting some major minutes. Amari Lewis and was, Benjamin Allen have been contr was big contributors the, all season for Coach Kumba. Yeah, that but whole. If that yeah. was on Allen, it's a costly one. Yeah. It wipes out what would have been a 15-yard run. Now, BG looks like they're going to blitz on first and 10 from the Cardinal 34-yard line. They're going to run a sweep near side. This is Lewis. He runs that's, out of real estate, and yeah. he's going to lose yards. Yeah, see what a, see what a pen takes your momentum away when you have a holding penalty like that, Nick. Nobody wants to go backwards after you've already gained yardage, and I don't think that, that hold, if, if, you know, if in fact it was a hold, that was it. I don't think that affected in any way uh, Ryder, uh, Auburn's uh, progress on that last play. And then what happens? You motivate the defense, makes the down and distance a whole different strategy, sh uh, shrinks the playbook opportunities. Coach uh, Coach Kumba tries to go wide, and BG responds. Sam Fayed with a good tackle there on the edge for Bishop Girton. There's three of them really closing it down. Yeah, Holmes is in the area as yeah. well. Four yard loss, second down and 14. Aubin out of the gun, four man rush in yeah. trouble, and look out! Wow. The walls come tumbling down. Aaron Shimalecki, the sophomore up front, leading the charge. Let's out a yell. It's another big loss, and now third and long on the way. Yeah, obviously, to, I believe it was Ethan that, that is uh, that is not dressed tonight. I Correct. believe That's not Alan. Young. That's his younger brother. Correct. Yes, Aaron, who got some great penetration. Wow. There. Yeah. Again, we talked about one of the keys. We talked about uh, about protection, Nick, but uh, there was just nowhere to go. They completely broken through the line. So. Probably some adjustments on the on the techniques that they're running on the defensive line, and uh, that worked for them there. That's actually two times the defensive line did a great job to sack. The results in minus ten, so third and twenty-six. Aubin oh, looking for a screen. Oh! It's picked off. AJ Holmes read it like a book, and he's gone for the touchdown. A fifty-three yard. Pick six is going to give BG now a 13-0 lead. Big-time play there, Nick. Big-time play for Bishop Girton. Wow. You talk about a whole, You talk about being stealth three or four yards away. You don't even see him in that play, and he, he was timing the whole thing. Watch him. You're going to see it, I think, from this angle. There you go. Comes up. He was about three or four yards back when the ball was thrown. And he knew it where it was going all the time. That, to me, is good film review. That's a good week in practice behind the camp, looking at the film and, and reacting to it. What a terrific job. Brought to the house from 53 yards out. The extra point from Lennon is up and good. So it's 14-0, a dream start for the home team here in this preliminary round matchup. Absolutely. Uh, uh, I certainly didn't expect this kind of a start. This is a When you can make big defensive plays that turn into points, that that's just gonna, uh, you know. <laughs> now BG's defense gets to rest, uh, you know, get, come out now. But I mean, the the, the offense is going to get the ball, and uh, the, uh, the defense got to come out now. But they're going to have uh, with a two with a two touchdown lead this early in the game. That's a momentum builder right there for BG. Yes, we can do it. Now, you just got to stay stay focused and stay committed, and uh, keep bringing it. But Ryder Aubin, don't forget, this guy's a special runner and a special passer. That was not his best choice right there. Just covered extremely well. And nobody was going to catch him there. So Holmes, the two-year starter. He's played a lot of football, a lot of meaningful football yes. for the Cardinals over the last couple yep. of seasons. Make a, makes a big play yep. in this first quarter. As we approach the midway point, BG, two touchdowns already, one on offense, and now one on defense as well. <clears throat> so... The onus now is on Dover to respond, trailing on the road here by a couple of scores. 
Lennon's kick is over end over end and handled at the 10 yard line. Wow. Back up the middle was Blake St. Laurent, sophomore defensive back. The kick returner gets up to about the 24 yard line. That's well, where the Dover offense will take over. What that does is take the sophomores and juniors in the you know, on the team, make them feel confident. You, you begin to gel as a football team, and everybody wants a piece now. It, it boosts their confidence of the whole of the whole side of the ball. And uh, that's what we're seeing right there on that uh, kick return. Everybody just swarming to the ball full speed. Dover's got to an answer here with something. If nothing else, get way down the other end in field position, but they really need to score an answer here. They're going to make a game out of this. Bailey is the tail in the pistol. Aubin against a four-man rush. Going to hand off. Bailey on his first carry. Spins through the hole. Nice run. And is dropped by Holmes at about the 31-yard line after a pickup of seven. Yeah, Bailey seems to be a guy, Nick, that is a go-to type guy. He is on fire tonight. If you watch him, no matter where he's playing, uh, he's he's focused. Great job straddling the line. Oh, what an awful face mask there that didn't get called. Wow. Officials missed it. Second down and three. Dover ready to go. They go back to Bailey, trying to bounce it left side. A second bounce. Going to get him up to the 35. Yeah. He's got a first down as he spun down eventually at the 38-yard line. You can clearly see Bailey's on fire. I'm not going to take this. He says, I'm going to do something about it for my football team. And... Um, those are three, two good runs right there. Back-to-back -back pickups yes. of seven yards. Boy, he's shifty. He, uh, I always, uh, one thing about Ryder, Aubin, and Bailey is they both look at the first seam and go after it. We were talking about that in the last game. And then they kick outside, and boy, that's where you can get off, knock off some, rip off some good yardage. Very good-looking runner. <clears throat> first and ten. Cardinals bring an extra defender to the line. Hard count, high snap. They keep it with Aubin, a left side run. Tries to cut it up at the 40. It's tackled from behind there by Chimilecki at about the 43-yard line. Called a pickup of four to bring up second down and six as we head towards five minutes to go Look first quarter. Look at Dover, play after play on the running game. The offensive line's doing a good job here. And uh, he gets through the line quick. There's no, look at that, nice slip inside. I thought he got more than four yards, Nick, but even so, that's, that's good yardage on first down. You like to get five or more. Second and six. <clears throat> Cardinals showing blitz. High snap. That one deflected off the quarterback. Picked up by Bailey. He's going to have a first down. Across the 50. Good heads up play by the senior. Well, it's been a couple of adventurous snaps here yeah. early for Dover, but that time danger averted. Yes, danger averted. That's just great hands right there. Look at him. Look at the deflection. <clears throat> now, you got a situation where you've had the Bailey show, Nick, here that's been going on. What does that do? That It's going to definitely create over-pursuit on Bailey. This might be a good time to, to run uh, Ryan Aubin the other side of the field and or, or fake to Bailey and, and do a keeper because... Uh, they're going to be following Bailey for sure. Well, Coach Kumba is going to take Bailey off. Yeah, he the, took him off. Off the field, at least for now, to catch his breath. After a 15-yard pickup. Oh, there you Here's go. Aubin up the middle, and that is good for a first down. 12 well, yards on a dive play for the quarterback as the Dover machine continues to churn here late I, in the first quarter. I could smell that play coming, Nick, where they was going to keep, he was going to do a keeper because they, they're, uh, they've done a great job with a running back kind of dictating the defensive pursuit here with, with the success that they've had. Boy, <laughs> Ryder does not run like a quarterback, does he? Well, he's already <clears throat> already got 35 yards on the ground. He's on a just, bull. Just two carries. All right, back to the spread here. Two receivers each side on first and 10. The football at the 33-yard line. Lewis in motion. Auburn's going to throw into the flat. It's nice caught pass. by McGinnis. He's got room, and he's got another first down. Decleated at about the 21-yard line after a gain of 13 through the well, air there. I would say he laid the wood on the tackler right there as opposed to the other way around, Nick. Uh, Dover does not like this score. You can see they're responding, and they're responding uh, very, very well. That's a nice flare out pass by uh, Ryder Alban, and he delivered the hit right there. He's there amped up. But, they, but, Nick, at the end of the day, they got to score. They, they can't just run it down into the, uh, the red zone and not, uh, not, not execute, but... They're on their way. Trying to get inside the 20 for the first time. 
And now the Cardinal fans stomping on the bleachers, chanting defense. First and 10 from the 21. Auburn to his right. Gets down to the 15. <clears throat> and is dropped at about the 14-yard line. Yeah. Sam Fox over there again on the stop for the Cardinals. Yeah, right now Dover playing in control but angry in control, Nick. And that's what you've got to do if you're going to pound yardage down the field. And, that's, and, and this is what they need to wear down that defense. Seven-yard pickup there for Aubin. Responding very well. Up to 42 yards now on the ground and just three carries. Had another long one wiped out on a penalty from earlier. Yep. Second and three. They fake. It's McGinnis on a direct snap. Spins inside the 10. He stood up and they're still five. pushing. Trying to gain some extra yardage and now a flag, <laughs> flag is going to... Flag is going to come in late. Boy, this could be a costly flag, Nick, if it goes against uh, BG. It's only going to be half the distance of the goal, which isn't great. But if this is against Dover, Nick, then it, it's going to be a costly, costly penalty. Well, again, the Dover offense retreating. Saw a hold on the previous drive in BG yeah, territory I'm, and maybe... I'm wondering if it's pushing, if it's just continuing after the whistle. Looks to me like a serious conversation going on where he, rightfully so, he's getting the opinions of the others. And it's a personal, against personal foul BG. against the defense. Okay. Yeah. You know, often I don't know if it was, Nick. We could maybe see it on the replay. But oftentimes what happens here is that they'll start punching at the ball. Uh, I'm not saying that happened, but uh, it was Londonary head coach Jimmy Lozon in the crowd. Lancers earlier took care of business against Wyndham. Yes. All right, so the personal foul is going to place the football right on the doorstep, just outside the one-yard line. Yeah, Dover, you can tell just in the, the way they're running to the line. They're ready to go. First and goal. Trailing 14-0. They keep it He's with in. Aubin, and he is in for the touchdown. Impressive, impressive response. A one-yard touchdown run for Ryder Aubin. As Dover gets the answer they wanted, primarily on the ground on that drive. Oh, absolutely. As they cut the BG lead in half, now 14-6, pending the extra point. Yeah, watch this. This is just Ryder Aubin <laughs> kind of going with the surfing to the wave and driving his legs in. Oh, this is going to be a great look right here. You see him come right through. Nice job, Ian and Matt. Great job. Look at this. Look at that. They're the just... Offensive line is driving off, getting in low. Extra point. Left-footed kicker. Perfect. Tucker Johnson, the senior, able to split the upright. So 14-7. We were awaiting a Dover response, so we get one right there. Uh, yeah, but not only do you get a response, it's the, it's the type of response. It was physical. It was, uh, it, uh, it was uh, a good play calling. There was no need of Coach Kumba to pass the ball in that situation when you're ripping off that kind of runs. And what it does, it was a punishing drive to the BG defense there. And that just shows the, the kind of will that Dover has in this game there. They, they knew that this was crunch time right here. They had to respond. They've done it. Now let's see what their defense can do if they, or, or what uh, the BG offense can do against them. But this is a very different complexion in the game that you might have felt five, seven minutes ago. Very, very different. Dover coming back like that, answering in that fashion, really kind of starts the process of evening the evening the, the feeling of the momentum of the game. I would almost say that BG is going to have to do something to stop that running game because I don't imagine that Dover is going to quit doing it as long as it works with that kind of success. <clears throat> little squib here. Taking inside the 40. This is Will Helmke going to dance his way up to the 45-yard line. Yep. And again, pretty good starting field position for BG. So the offense back onto the field it's <laughs> for the first time in a while. <clears throat> they scored on the first trip, what, at the 9.46 yeah. mark and have been on the sideline since. You know, Nick, I, I, I understand you don't want to kick it to the, to the return guy. But I'm not sure I want to give somebody 45-yard line every time. This is not in the spirit of what I was thinking about, Nick, when we were talking to Coach Relly. It's, it's getting it outside the hash marks, bounding down deep and cornering them in and maybe giving them up to the 25 or 30. 
but not to the 50. This is uh, really, really, this is field position given to them. We've got a double blitz here exactly. on first and 10, and that forces an incomplete. Well timed as two men came off both edges. Yeah, well, he was uh, he was right in the face of um, Bailey playing. Uh, Bailey checking into this game, Nick, in all phases of the game. He's really standing out is uh, uh, from Dover, obviously Ryder Aubin, but that's expect. Not that Bailey isn't, but he's really on cue tonight. Yeah, they're lining him up all over the field too. Yeah, he's going to try and come in off the near edge this time. McDonough going to tuck and run on second and 10. Cuts up at midfield. Turns he's, his back he's to the close. defense at about the Dover 46-yard line. No. Looks like about a yard shy. Yeah, about, about a half a yard shy. So third down and short on the way. Yep. But nice run by McDonough. He, he got more yards out of that by that quick little turn in the last uh, minute there. He, watch him. Watch how he runs. He avoids the direct contact coming straight through it like it turns inside like that and again and he grabs another two or three yards so he's got his team with a third and really short here so but they got it they have to execute third and inches big package here for bg they keep it with the quarterback they and got done has got the first down ball comes out at the tail end but McDon mcdonald was down and they'll spot him at about the 44 yard line so first and 10 on the way as we approach the final minute here, first quarter. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta uh, love, uh, you know, scoring, and then the other team responding. This is BG responding. This is the kind of game, more or less, a game we were kind of thought, Nick. The thirteen to nothing, fourteen to nothing, seemed kind of whoa. What happened there? This isn't expected between these two teams, in my mind, or it wasn't. And uh, now BG's trying to respond. He had put together a drive as well. Trips right Dude, side, got some press coverage here, it looks like, on the outside. And a blitz coming up the middle. McDonough steps up and again is going to pick up yardage on a scramble. Looks like he got three down to about the 42-yard line. Second down and seven. Another aggressive play call from the Dover coaching staff there as they continue to bring extra heat. Well, I know that's not a big gain. It's only two yards or so, Nick, but what Mike McDonough did right there was a big deal. His pocket presence, his awareness of the containment, and it closing around him, and he's making the right, uh, uh, running in the right direction at the right time. It could have easily been a loss. Second and seven, screen. It's caught by Sam Fayed. Fayed is inside the 40. Nice job by Dover covering that there. Looks like he was stopped by the lineman, Kyle Merrill. Sniffed it out. Good read. It goes for four. And that'll bring us to the end of the first quarter. BG, a couple of touchdowns early, including a pick six from A.J. Holmes. Dover strikes back to cut the lead in half. As we head to the second quarter, the Cardinals leading the Green Wave by a 14-7 score. Second quarter on the way. You are watching our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week. Presented by Beals Insurance. Our broadcast today, as it always is, is brought to you by Beals Insurance Agency, with locations now in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance will get you both the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Just call 603-471-9999 or visit BealsInsurance.com to request a free quote and start saving money today. Again, that's BealsInsurance.com. Third down and four as we begin the second quarter here in Nashua. Nick Anastas, Steve Beals with you. It's our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week presented by Beals Insurance on third and four. A.J. Holmes not going to find the stick, only picks up two. Yeah, he got tripped up there, Nick. Uh, from That'll somebody set up a fourth and two. Somebody knifed in there and, and uh, took out his legs, and it's a good thing they did for Dover because he was heading for first down land, but... Uh, it was Bailey who got him initially. Yeah, initially, and he slowed him down, and then it finished. Yeah, we got a battle of the field. Both, you can see the players uh, 
A lot of physical activity going on between these guys, both trying to establish control. Fourth down and two. Going to be a long count here. Three receivers right side, one short side left over. Going to blitz again. The throw is down the field, looking for Lennon, and it's incomplete. Yeah. Should have been a penalty right there. He grabbed his jersey from the back. Off the fingertips, in on the coverage yeah. with Sam Gruby. Uh, official was right there over on the, the near hash mark here, looking right at it. That that was clearly, see him hold it, see him tug his thing just enough, tugged it twice. A little bit of a tug goes unnoticed, and yeah. as a result, Look at that. Bishop Girton turns the football over on downs. Yeah, but that tug, Nick, is the difference between him catching the ball and not. That was clearly uh, interference without any question there. So first and ten as Dover gets the stop they wanted. And now trailing here 14-7. to seven, Potentially can set themselves up to tie the game with a minute gone by here in the second quarter. Cardinals put up the four, first 14 points of the contest. Dover scored on their last possession. First and ten. It's a sweep for the freshman. Lewis going nice to feel run. his way over the 40, up to about the 44-yard line for a gain of seven. Well, Wash, he knew we had a block here, and so don't don't mis misunderstand his delay. It was a smart move to do it. He was waiting for that block to take hold. Look at him. He's waiting to see if it's an outside or inside. He reads. Unfortunately, he chose the wrong side. I think if he chose inside, Nick, he had a lot more yardage there. But he did a good job at least letting it develop as he's working his way downfield. So. Alistair with the tackle. Second down and three. It's like the Cardinals bringing extra heat on each edge. Bobbled snap. That's costly. And Aubin, yep, going to try and fight his way back to the line of scrimmage. Well, how about Aubin right there looking at a two-yard loss, and he's probably got close to a one-yard. He's back to the line of scrimmage, Nick. You're right. So uh, third down. Third and two, a gain of one there. Yep. Tackle by Miller Nichols, the junior. Yep. Now what do you do? Let's say they get back to the line of scrimmage. What do you do? Do you go far and fourth down inside your 50 or your 45-yard line? Do you kick it away? I, if you've got a good kicker and a good punt team, I'd probably kick it away. Well, it may be a moot point if Dover can move the sticks That's here. That's the whole point. Just trying to think ahead. That's all. Third and two. BG, a lot of defensive movement along the line of scrimmage. No hands on the turf right now. Everybody's standing. So a confusing look here. Aubin is going to diagnose, takes a snap, calls his own number to the right. And he's got the first down, but a flag is on the play. Yeah, I think they're going to get a hold either on Bailey or number 14, uh, Amari Lewis. One or the other. I, I couldn't tell which one, but that's going to be a costly penalty. It's going to wipe out a first down. It's also the second penalty no, it's, of the night it's against not, Dover. It's number uh, 70. Well, it may have been Bailey. I, I didn't see that. It, it didn't appear. So, it would, if it was Bailey, it was really early. It, well, it's against Dover. Yeah. I'm going to get to the number in a sec. But either way, it's... It's going to hurt Dover here as it wipes out what would have been a first down run for yeah, Ryder Robin. Like number 76, it looks like uh, Liam McNeil. Watch Liam McNeil. See, he's got his hands on the outside, and he's got, got the shoulder pads, all of the shoulder pads on the outside. To me, Nick, i got to be honest with you, I don't really see that as holding. They're on the outside, but there's no major, no pressure really being applied there. But that's a costly penalty. Looked pretty minor to me. I don't know about you. Third and nine. Aubin on a rollout left side. Going to throw downfield. Oh, He's got a man. Pass. It's complete to Bryce Carberry. First down and then some into Cardinal territory at the 43-yard line. So a 19-yard pickup through the air there. Number one thing I look for in a quarterback, Nick, is how he rolls out to his weak side. And Ryan Aubin did it perfectly right there. When It takes such coordination and arm strength to throw from your weak side. And he hit a bullet exactly where he needed to throw it. Ryan Aubin is the, is the real deal. Fayed with his second tackle for BG. So difficult to play from your weak side when you're rolling out. You're taking away all. It's all arm strength at that point, and he has it. Aubin under center here. A little different look. Hand off up the middle. Bailey, Bailey. push the pile. Like the way those two play the game, don't you? Gets low to the ground and picks up additional yardage after contact. And how about that offensive line getting a good surge off the football? Again, so much of that 
obviously his coaching and all the other elements, but never underestimate how the quarterback calls a cadence call and to give them the kind of advantage off the ball that they need. And Ryan uh, Ryder does a great job at that. Four-yard gain for Bailey on his fourth carry. Second down and six on the way. Dover trailing here, 14-7. Nearly four minutes gone by, second quarter. Three down linemen. They'll bring four on the blitz. The throw is oh, caught nice by catch. McGinnis on a spin. Tackled inside the 30 of the 20, excuse me, 29-yard line by Zemanski. But not before Dover moves the sticks yet again. Yeah, they're, they're knocking on tying this game back up, Nick. And that what happens is that creates no comfortability in this if you're BG. You come out to a 14-0 lead, and you're watching it dissipate away here as Dover is on cue. You got to give the Dover uh, program a lot of credit. A lot of teams could have given in. You, you kind of you didn't expect that with Dover, and it didn't happen. Coach Kumba calling a nice play sequencing here as they move this ball down the field. Dover Looking approaching strong. the red zone here, trailing 14-7. Looking for touchdowns on back-to-back -back drives. Hand off Bailey. Got a little room initially. He's going to lower the shoulder down to about the 25-yard line for a five-yard gain. Yeah, nice down, nice down block right there. You're going to see it. A little delayed handoff trap here. Watch this. You're going to see him come down and seal it right off. Great job. Okay, excellent work there. Who is that lineman right there? That is number 67. What a terrific job on that trap play. Outstanding block. You know, he didn't try to knock him uh, out in the hash marks. He did his job by sealing him off just the way you're supposed to. Lengthy drive here. Nearly five minutes already for Dover. Second down and seven officially. Another blitz for BG. Aubin going to throw incomplete. Yeah, he had Bailey uh, on a flare out there at the time. And there was nobody on him at the time, Nick. And uh, I, 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 funny thing is, is Ryder looked at him, and he, he looked off. So he was looking to go downfield. But looked to me like Bailey was open on there out in the uh, out by the hashes and the numbers there. And he had some room to run. So clear four down territory, unless they've got a kicker that can kick it 44 yards. But third and seven. You don't need it all here. You just need to get it closer or beyond. Obviously, they want the first down, but you can make this a two-play plan another, if you want to. Another mystery front here for BG. As they've got five standing down linemen. They're going to bring six. The throw is caught. It's Carberry. Yeah, and he grabbed the first down. A leaping grab inside the 20 at the 19-yard line, enough to move the sticks. What do you think of Ryder Robin, Nick? What a, what a player. What a quarterback. He's got a lot of poise out there. Working in the pocket. These are time routes that, that make it very difficult for the defensive line to be able to get to him. And uh, and Ryder just sitting in there. He's he's a quarterback that doesn't have to worry much about physicality because he's so strong himself. He's built as good as any linebacker. So he can hang in there. And uh, his vision downfield has been very, very impressive. His choices are impressive. <clears throat> Carberry with his second catch. Don't be a, don't be a surprise if you get a, uh, a decoy and a run by Aubin here. First and ten. Fake handoff. Out of the gun. Nope. Takes a chest high snap. Four-man rush. Going to tuck. Going to run. Going to throw. Oh, what a Caught play. by Lewis. Touchdown. Oh. But a penalty flag is thrown late near the line of scrimmage. If it stands, it'll be a 19-yard touchdown. <clears throat> But this well, may be another hold against Dover. If I was Coach Coomber, I'd go out to the referee and say, okay, what is it? how do you want us to block in this situation? Because there's three of them right now. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I just don't see it, Nick. I, I don't know where it is. So they're doing something that as an official is reading it, and that's okay. That's their job. They're doing their job. But you want to know what you're doing wrong because there's nothing blatant there, Nick, by any stretch, if that's you know what I mean. Third hold against yep, Dover yep. here in the first uh, but, half. But none of them are blatant. Uh, then the one hold that was on the receiver was clear. Uh, held him, uh, was holding him from the on the shirt from the back. But I just I don't know where that holding is there, Nick. Anywhere near the the uh, point of attack or uh, in any way, uh, I don't know. It's going to be well. You want to talk about costly penalties? That yeah. one wipes off a touchdown. Oh my gosh, these are huge penalties. So BG still out in front for now, fourteen seven. As we hit the midway point, second quarter. Four-man front for the Cardinals. And another three-man receiver set for Dover. 
Hand just, off. This is Bailey trying yeah. to grind his way inside the 30. He's down to the 27-yard line. These penalties for just stopped by Ronzio. They just take the steam right out of your whole offensive thing there. I mean, just a two-yard gain there officially for Bailey. Now Dover going to hustle to the line here. Send three receivers strong side left. Fayed coming in off the edge. Yep. Somebody move for BG. There's badly needed five yards right there next. Jaden Boskett, the junior, got caught up in the neutral zone. He's frustrated with himself. That's a, don't underestimate the importance of that five yards. It gets five of the ten that they were penalized back, and, <clears throat> and it's still only second down and potentially four down territory if they're looking for the seven. And uh, it's three penalties each way now. Yep. But the timing of the Dover penalties have been huge. R really and the yardage totals, three for 11 yeah. yards for BG, three for 30 against Dover. Yep. Second and 13 after all that. Same formation, Aubin going to face a five-man rush. Going to throw right side. He's got McGinnis, what a throw. and he's wide open for a touchdown. What a throw and no flags. A 22-yard strike wow. through the air. Ryan Aubin to his classmate, Brady McGinnis. Well done. And the execution, perfect on that one. I think Dover a point away from tying this football game. You're going to look at the replay right here. Watch the, the release. Uh, we're not going to see it there. We'll see another one. But Aubin provided the protection. One of those keys of the game, we said, will he get the protection when BG brings it? They, pro they provide him good protection, a good window to throw it out of. And McGinnis just ran that deep fadeaway route there. What a terrific job. <clears throat> but... And now the lefty kicker is back on. That's Tucker Johnson for the extra point. It's right down the middle. We got ourselves a game. A brand new one. Wow. 14 apiece here with 5.39 to go in the second quarter. Yeah, one of the things you look at uh, that the offensive line provided him, that was hard to pick up. Watch this. They're outmanned right there. They're bringing everybody. And look at that. <laughs> one offensive lining blocking two guys at a kick out. And that just created the matchups to uh, that, that uh, Ryder knew there was going to be individual coverage, and he was way behind the play, or way ahead of the play. McGinnis gets free and throws an absolute strike right in the end zone. So, you, boy, that's that's perseverance to have that kind of penalty come, and, and they're just cool as a cucumber. Coach uh, Kumba calling a very good, very well-structured offensive play sequencing that's getting them down the field. BG struggling. They're, they're, they're starting to throw everybody at them, and you're still getting beat. That's good offensive line work. One of the keys of the game was who's going to get protection, who's not. So far this game, both teams are getting protection. Right. But uh, Ryder Robin and uh, Mike uh, McDonald have, are terrific runners, so no wonder this score is 14-14 at this point. Started off with a 14 nothing lead. Yes. For Bishop Girton. As Mike McDonough on a 16-yard touchdown run put the Cardinals out in front less than three minutes in. Yep. This kick's going to be waved off with a whistle. Moments later, a pick six. A.J. Holmes took yep. it to the house from 53 yards out. And B.G. looking good early on, 14 nothing at that point. But Dover with just over two minutes remaining in the first quarter. Got Ryder Aubin into the end zone from a yard away, and just a moment ago, Aubin hooks up with Brady McGinnis from 22 yards out to tie the game. Both these quarterbacks, Nick, who wouldn't want either one of these quarterbacks on their football team? These guys are terrific. They're leaders. Um, they've got great, got strong arms. They're both very good at runners. They have their own individual styles that lead to their strengths, but their common principles behind leadership, calling good cadence, working the mission out on the field that the offensive scheme has put it put into play for the week they manage it extremely well and they're very very effective good quarterbacks uh, and i don't best. know about you nick you know you have great defense that's great but you want great defenses to defend against good offenses and we're seeing that tonight sorry i didn't mean to interrupt no been an entertaining one nick and ask the steve beals with you preliminary round coverage the eight seed against the nine seed what could be the best Game of the weekend here. The winner will head to top-seeded Pinkerton next weekend. Well, that kick right there on the 30 is about what you want to do. You want to, you want to, uh, no run back. Uh, it's five eight with the fair catch. I don't think he he was. I think he was told you just take the ball, catch it, go down, and let our offense do the work. That's our strong point. If that was the case, that'd be, I, I agree with that by Coach Nalen. They'll take it at their own 31. But that's not on the 45, 50 yard line uh, like some of these other kicks were. 
at least, uh, you know, they got to move the sticks a couple times to get across the, the midfield. So the Cardinals' previous drive ended on a fourth down conversion attempt that resulted in an incomplete pass. Yep. Now looking for the lead after surrendering two straight touchdowns. McGinnis oh, got a pass. man. It's Lennon down the seam. He's inside the Dover 40-yard line after a big pickup of 29 yards through the air. Now watch. The ball was a little bit underthrown on the pattern, Nick. But watch Glennon adjust for this. Look at Mike. He knows exactly. And watch him. He just waits for it nicely. If you want to see a, a, a play where the receiver catches it before he runs, that you saw it right there. Look at him. All concentration. Then his hips turn and runs the ball. What a great job by Mr. Glenn. Nice. Not a bad pass at all by Mike McDonough either. First and 10. It goes for 29. That's the longest play from scrimmage for BG. Oh, what a gaping hole. Holmes ball. makes a man miss at the second level. A first down and then some. He's spun down just shy of the 20-yard line after a gain of 17. Okay, watch number 77 here. Uh, Aaron Chimilecki. Look at look at 77. Open up that outside seal and just completely defends the outside. That's a sophomore that just made that block. Mm. That is a that comes from coaching and quality work on the off it, it, during the regular season to bring these guys along. How about that? Jim Alecki with already three tackles defensively Yeah, to is, go along with a sack. But that's just great blocking right there. Showing you what he can do on the offensive line. So first and ten, the ball just shy of the red zone at the 21-yard line of Dover. McDonough looks left, throws left, got a man wide open. It's caught by Sam Franco. He's driven out of bounds at the 11-yard line. That is close to a first down. And they say do indeed move the sticks again. Was 10. that Franco? Yep. How do you leave him that wide open? The cornerback was back about to. Must have been a. Uh, yeah, they're talking about it right now. That they had a defensive mix up there, and I believe he's going to call a yeah, time. Got a time out here by Dover. Yeah. Our broadcast tonight brought to you by Beals Insurance locations in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance will get you the quality price and coverage that's right for you. Visit BealsInsurance.com. Also by MG Sports Fundraising. That's fundraising made easy. MG Sports Fundraising, the official fundraising partner of Friday Night Lights New Hampshire. Visit MGSportsFundraising.com. Start raising money for your team today. By New Hampshire iPhone Repair, it's done while you wait, and it's backed by their lifetime warranty. Now with five locations in southern New Hampshire and on the seacoast, visit nhiphonerepair.com. By the New Hampshire Tomahawks, showcase and development for college lacrosse. Visit nhtomahawks.com and also girls.nhtomahawks.com. And finally, by Spectrum Monthly, powerful local advertising solutions. Find out more at spectrummonthly.com. First down and 10 in an old rugby formation here. One back, they go to Holmes, and he's going to follow the guard up the middle, inside the 10, close to the 6-yard line for a 4-yard pickup. They'll take it, though. Yep. Yeah, they'll take it. Uh, the fact that you can get a first down as you get close to the end zone opens up some options. Kind of frustrates the defense a little bit because it isn't just in goal. They're going to go flip the script this time. It's Holmes again, a yeah. wrestling match at the 2-yard line. Going to be brought down by Dover's Jacob Bernier. So as I was saying last time, now you're looking at looks like third and one, a yard, and you could still get a first down, Nick. So it opens up opportunities for multiple plays. How do you defend this? They now have to. Def they don't. They don't just need to defend the goal line. They need to defend the first down. They're going to fake to Holmes, he's or no? He's got it, and he's going to be stopped very close to the one yard line where he needed to get. I think he's got it. Uh, I don't know now. Depends on where, they, where the placement is. Cam Mitchell on the tackle, his second so far for Dover, and that one could be big. Okay. I, they do hold him. It's going to be fourth and less than a yard. So, Coach Nalen with a decision to make here as the clock continuing to tick down towards three minutes. Yes. Most likely going to leave the offense on the field here. It's fourth and less than a yard. Yep. With the football, looks like, just inside the two-yard line. Indeed, the quarterback goes back to the huddle. Cardinals looking for the lead before halftime. Don't be surprised if they try to draw them off sides here. Whoa. They're going to talk out. about it. Yep. Who is it? I think it's the Cardinals. Yeah, I think so too. As BG kind of lingered in the huddle there yep. for a moment. 
Coach Nalen not going to take any chances. Calls a timeout here to talk about. Yeah, you got. I mean, it's big. You got. It's a big point in the game right here. Uh, you know, if you're Dover, you start out the first seven minutes of the game, Nick. You're down 14 zip. Right. Now they've fought their way back. If they go into halftime at 14 14, they're going to be thrilled. So this is a big play for Dover to stop, and it's a big one for BG at the same time to be able to to uh, to get this into the end zone and go and kind of get that advantage back and make Dover go in thinking up. Oh, here we are again from we're behind. So it's all, this is a big play right here in the game. By no means the, is it going to determine the outcome, but there's a half to play. But for the Cardinals, it's going to be a, 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 a really a good, a, a serious advantage if they can get this in. All right, Holmes is the wing back. We could wind up with a first down here, Nick, instead. The fullback is Theo Leonard, the senior. Yeah, they're trying to draw him. McDonough is under center. And there's 11 men in the box for Dover. McDonough on a keeper. In. Finds a way into the end zone. Yeah. It's a two-yard touchdown. The second on the ground for senior quarterback Mike McDonough. And the decision by Coach Nalen to go for it pays off as his quarterback finds pay dirt. And BG <laughs> finds their way to yeah. retake the lead 20-14. to 14. It doesn't matter. This is a gutsy call, Nick. You can go in and with three and play it safe. And what he did, look at the block by number six from BG. That's uh, Miller Nichols. What a terrific block. Big score for BG to go into halftime. Kick by Lennon. Is Up. good. And good. Boy, we got a game here, Nick. 21-14. But 247, where Dover's got two timeouts, 247. Yep. And nobody wants to kick deep, so everybody started off with pretty darn good field position. We'll see what happens on this kick. But uh, the way Auburn's been running this offense, anything can happen it's here. 69-yard touchdown drive, capped off by the two-yard run by Mike McDonough on the fourth down conversion. We welcome those of you watching statewide, well, nationwide, worldwide. 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 We're on YouTube. FNL NH Media, hit the subscribe button if you have not done so already. You want to be in the know the rest of the postseason as we continue through the month of November. Most likely, two more broadcasts on the way next weekend. So we're not on, on the radio tire go, uh, tower going out about it. We're going way beyond that. Wow. Yes. I run a little behind on all that stuff. <laughs> no, just kidding. No, you're actually on the... On the front lines. Oh, I, I watch videos all day about Wi-Fi today. <laughs> That's become your new hobby for sure. <laughs> yeah, temporarily. <clears throat> all right, Dover, as you mentioned, I like Steve, to drive John crazy. They're equipped with two timeouts here in 247. Yes. And we know this offense can strike quickly. Lennon's kick yeah, they're going, is end they're over going end. Deep. It's a deep one. It'll be handled by McGinnis inside the 10-yard line at the 9. He makes his way up the middle, and he's got a seam. He's at the 40, putting on the speed at the 50. Down the near sideline, inside the 25. One man to beat at the 10, and he's in the end zone no. for a touchdown. Flag down. However, there's a flag thrown at the tail end of the run at the 2-yard line. If it stands, it will. it's going to be a 91-yard kick return for a touchdown. Absolutely unnecessary penalty on Dover's part, Nick. The guy was flanking him down the line, and he grabbed his right arm. And as soon as he did that, the flag went up the air. So watch the right side as they come down. We're probably going to get two views of this. I'm sure one of them will actually get three views of this. I'm sure we're going to see that. That's just a great job running up the chute and uh, going all vertical and then getting outside. Look at him pump those legs. That is a guy on him. Now watch out of here. You're going to see right here, he, uh, you, it went out of view. He grabbed the, the right arm of, of the defender. I think it was Aaron Lewis, the yep, freshman. I think it was. We're going to see it from another angle here. Here, you'll see it from Matt's camera, I think. No? Maybe well, not. The, a lengthy discussion here by Jeff Kleiman, our referee tonight, checking with his crew. Going to pick it up. There is no foul. Oh. Wow. So it's a touchdown. <laughs> a 91-yard <laughs> kickoff return by Brady McGinnis. And that one brings Dover back within a point at 21-20. I think we're going to see another angle. I think we're going to see another angle right here. Now watch it. You're going to see it on the inside. He come, What a great job going up the chute. Just doing it. That's what we like. Jets on. Cuts outside. Now watch, watch him coming down, and then it looks like, see, he grabs on right there. Right there is a grab. I saw it when it went there live. And they called off, and it was right at the point of attack. So, so it was a hold on the shoulder pad. 
So Tucker Johnson's extra point is going to tie this football game yet again at 21 apiece. But Dover, special teams Dover's factory in here late in the first half. In all fairness, Dover's had some tough calls against them. They got one in their favor right there. So uh, I'm not sure he would have caught him. I think from this view right here, I think from this view right here, you're going to see whoever the offensive line coordinator, it, coach uh, here, is a, does a terrific job because he pushes the limit on, on holding every time, and I like that style. You grab whatever you can, you tone it down. Grab whatever kind of – yeah, so you're going to see he's behind him. The th the th it, I don't think it would have caught him. It, it doesn't matter. He wouldn't have caught him anyway. You know, like I say, Dover's had three holding calls on them that were pretty, pretty rough. Uh, and uh, so, you know, things do kind of even out. You know, what I don't mind there, Nick, is the officials running his tail off down the field. Right. You make a mistake, you make a mistake, you don't. The official makes the call, and they communicated very well afterwards. And I believe that they thought say, it was kind of an incidental-type contact. They pulled the flag away, Dover touchdown. They certainly, like I said, have, uh, have had their lumps and bumps on the holding calls uh, in this game so far. So, so now Johnson will kick off here with 234, 234. That didn't remaining. take long, huh? Still a lot of time for BG to work with. Fielded on the run by Alex Dolan. The sophomore takes a big hit at about the 35-yard line. And, you know, one of the things we didn't talk about is why would you kick it deep there when you're going out, coming to the end of the first half? You don't kick it deep at least three times, right? And all of a sudden you, you kick it deep there and, and, and give that kind of a, of, of, a uh, of, of the Dover personnel to be able to run it back uh, for a touchdown. So, you know, it just... I guess at some point you say, hey, I don't want him at the 40, so I'm going to kick it deep, but that's what ha that's what can happen. I think at some point you just got to trust the kick coverage team. Yeah, I, You're I, out there to make a tackle. You stay well, in your lanes. You execute. It, you, you do what you got to do. And Invariably, the kick team always has some some of the younger developing players in it, and it's McDonough in oh, trouble. McDonough in trouble, yeah. Stumbles and is taken down for a sack. Give the credit up front to Toby DeRoche, the junior. He checks in here in a big way for Dover. It's a loss there for the Cardinals yes. of seven yards. So a second down and 17 is the clock ticking down towards two minutes. Bear in mind, Dover still has two timeouts, 2.03 left. They can stop the clock. I think they're going to let one more play go. And if they can if they can cut him short here and it's like third and nine or something like that, don't be surprised if he calls a timeout and says, we'll take the ball back again. From their own 28-yard line, second down and 17. Man in motion is Helmke. McDonough looks his way, now tosses right. Oh, what a Holmes catch. a juggling catch at the 30, dives his yeah. way up to the 34, and now another flag is going to be thrown late. And that stops the clock, which is, if it is on BG, that certainly is Dover's favor, but we'll see what happens here. I don't know if that's a late hit against Dover. I don't know. Take another look at the replay here. Is, I believe a defender came in late. Yeah, you could Great be right. Great catch by Holmes. Falls forward and then yeah, from you behind, can't land on a guy like that. A bit of a body slam there by yeah. Kyle Merrill. Yep. All you got to do is touch him. But you know, in in high school, once you're down, you're down. Right. So it isn't like that you can get up. That's a that's an unfortunate play for Dover. But uh, BG will take it because I believe it'll be an automatic first down if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it is. Another tough one here for Dover. They had three offensive holds. One of them wiped out a touchdown. Their first defensive penalty is yes. going to cost them 15 yards. Yeah, in the big leagues, Nick, obviously he can still get up and run, so that probably is okay as long as it's not uh, uh, up above the uh, the shoulders. Uh, but uh, in this particular case, that runner goes down at high school football, he's done. So, so all of a sudden you don't even have to touch him. A little bit of a different scenario here for BG. Big They're close to midfield. Yeah, good point. Still with 95 seconds remaining. They have one timeout. Game tied at 21. McDonough going to throw left side. Oh, He's got Shimonaki throw. in the middle of the field. A 13-yard pickup down to the 39-yard line. Another first down for the Cardinals. They'll pause the clock momentarily to move the chains. You're going to see here. Watch this cut inside. Mike does it. Mike McDonough does this with such ease, Nick. You can tell, again, 2,000 attempts. You're going to get it right, and he does it almost every single time. Third grab for Chimilecki. Sorry, Zemanski. Oh, this one caught be... by Lennon near the sideline. This is Gets good his stuff foot down here. inside the 30 at the 28-yard line. 
little two-minute drill here for the Cardinals looking good so far. I hope you, the fans out there, are, are appreciating the quality of both of these quarterbacks and the offensive schemes that are bringing in here. These are two teams that should play each other more. Minute 10 remaining. Three receivers, strong side right. The back is Faid to the left of McDonough. Gun snap, three-man rush. Oh, what a tuck, great Goes up the middle to the 25, breaks a tackle, and stumbles no his way ball. down to about the 22-yard yep. line. Cardinals wanted a face mask. Well, it was close. I think what you're going to look here, Nick, is he was up around the face mask, but no fingers in any way grabbed it from what I could see. But we'll see if that in slow motion here. Oh, boy, it could have been called. Yep, could have been called. Yep, looked to me like the... Uh, oh, what? Quick throw. So well. Samansky breaks a tackle at the 10-yard line, and he's this in the a, end zone for the touchdown. A 23-yard score, McDonough to Samansky. That's been the combination all season long. The senior on his fourth catch finds the end zone, and this, Marie takes the lead for his team. This guy does inside-out routes, Nick, so well. He catches the ball, and then he the way he pivots his hips, so he steps, and he watch him plant. He plants and then kicks out. He's a gifted receiver, and when you've got a quarterback that puts the ball where it's supposed to be like Mike McDonough does, wow, that is an impressive drive in short order. Yeah. <laughs> Field goal up and good. Don't Sorry, laugh. Ex extra point up and good. It's 28-21. Don't laugh, Dick. we still got 37 seconds. The Dover with still two timeouts. Who knows what can happen? 28-21, a 22-yard hookup there. Yeah. Zemanski in this first half. My buddy Jason next to us called us at a track meet. I, I don't see any track out here, but I agree with him. A lot of speed for sure. 63 yards on four grabs for Zemanski, Division One's leading receiver on the season. <laughs> so, blink and you missed it. You know, Nick, this the is The Cardinals in less than two minutes go up the field. This is cash in. This is sorry, Nick. This is not sloppy football. This is this is teams that really work hard, executing their passing game to a high level. Coaches and the players, specifically the quarterbacks, are in sync on both of these teams tonight, and they're using their weapons uh, to the very best of their ability. Twenty-eight, twenty-one. I heard a couple people. We talked about it, Nick. Whoever has the ball last wins. Uh, it's looking that way now. Squib, <clears throat> handled by Wood, the up man. Cuts up inside the 40. It's going to be wrapped up and dropped by Ian Lenardi, the sophomore wow. linebacker. Another flag is going to be thrown late. Yep, I think they're going to get uh, after the whistle play here. We'll see. Pretty sure this is going to go against BG, Nick. <clears throat> and that's going to put Dover with 30 seconds, 30 seconds and two timeouts left. It's going to probably give them another another 15 or 10. Will that be 10? I think that'll be. I think that'll be close to 15. We don't know what the call is yet. Officials continuing to discuss. You know, they are communicating on almost every every infraction here. You know, when you get these when you get these passing routes, Nick, there's a lot going on and a lot to watch. They're really spreading out the whole field. Fifteen. So it will be they'll be going inside BG territory. So so, face mask. So 15 tacked on to the end of the run. This, this can be done. The ball at the Cardinal 43-yard line, 30 yeah. seconds remaining. Interesting what defensive posture that BG is going to do. It looks to me like they're running 3-8 as far as uh, on the line. They're going to run a three-man front. You know, this, that can go two ways. It probably isn't going to apply a lot of pressure. It's going to take some big individual efforts from those three down linemen, but... Given Auburn that kind of time and that kind of running lane. Dover with two timeouts remaining. It's all about getting out of bounds after you've made your gains. On first and ten, Auburn trying to escape the pocket, runs to his right, tells his man to go deep, and then throws it incomplete. Yep. Going to grind that one into the turf. They live to see another down with 22 seconds. It'll be second and ten. So many quarterbacks, Nick, would see the 30 seconds, and they'd throw that ball downfield because they don't really understand the impact of being able to maintain possession. Worst case scenario, you want to go out of here 28-21. What you don't want is to throw some in a pe some pick six and uh, Ryan uh, Ryder showing his uh, experience as a quarterback. That was a right move. Nothing downfield. Three receivers left side. Another three-man front for BG. 
On second and ten, Aubin going to step up, going to throw down the middle. It's caught by Carberry. The tight end slips the first man, breaks a tackle. Whoa. Still on his feet at the 25. Fights his way down to the 23. And the clock with less than 12 seconds remaining is going to be stopped with the Dover timeout here. So Coach Kumba will expend timeout number two to freeze the clock with 11.8 seconds remaining. The football now at the Cardinal 23-yard line. Good timeout, good clock management. In some respects, he lost about five seconds, Nick, trying to extend that ball for an extra two yards. You never want to take that away from a runner, Nick, but in that particular situation, he's trying to break through and get break three and get a touchdown. But in a strange sort of way, that five seconds was another play that they could have run. But there's nothing you can do about that. That's just the just a player trying to do what's right for his team. Carberry three grabs, 46 yards unofficially. Yeah. He's been effective in the middle of the field for <coughs> Coach Kumba. So BG hoping to hang on to the lead over the final 11.8 seconds. Hard to imagine three plays from this level. I think you got two in the system unless you can somehow go to the end zone and call your last time out. Uh, Bishop Girton will receive the second half kickoff as well, so that's something to keep in the back of the mind. Very interested in this play call right here. What? What, what is his goal here? Is he going to try to get it down to the 10 and then fire to the end zone maybe twice? I don't know. Again, one timeout remaining for Dover. McGinnis is the back. Aubin in the pistol. Two receivers to his left, two to his right. Three-man rush from the Cardinals. Aubin with time. Throws over the middle and it's batted down and complete. Yep. Good closing speed there. Hudson Schmidt got two hands on that pass attempt. Knocked it down with some... Enthusiasm. Yeah, Im Im impressive right there. The sophomore playing well. Yeah, he That's sat a big play. Dover sat left with just 6.8 seconds. A lot of remaining. time in the pocket went away there, Nick, before he threw one, two, three, four, before he released, four seconds before he releases it. And that's just great recovery to your point, Nick. Who was that on defense there? I couldn't see the number. It was the sophomore, Hudson Schmidt. Yeah, these sophomores are PG. Yeah. <laughs> They're playing some good football. All right, 6.8 <clears throat> remaining. Second down and 10, Dover hoping to tie the game before halftime. Aubin rolling left, eyes downfield, off the back foot. This one sails on him incomplete, but still yeah. two seconds remaining. One more play. And a third and 10 on the way. This likely will be the final play of the first half. Yeah, BG doing a good job staying behind the receivers, good coverage. And now a timeout. Is called by Bishop Gurdon. I mean, you're going to use their final timeout right here. You got Aubin with wide open, plenty of time, good vision. There's just literally nothing open. So, good coverage packages uh, here by BG, uh, which is uh, grinding down the time and the clock down to one play. But clearly, this is going to go in the end zone or on some sort of an inside deep slant or something on the five yard line to finish. But that's what they're going to need to do. Reminder coming up at halftime. Full recap from the first half, stats, highlights, analysis, a look back at today's first round action in Division One as well. And, of course, we'll, I believe, have some on-field entertainment as well from the Bishop Girton marching band. All that and more coming up at halftime. Cardinals hoping that they'll have the lead two seconds from now when they head to the locker room. Dover would love to tie this game after trailing by as many as 14 early on. All right, they're going to try the field goal, Steve. Tucker Johnson going to test the youngster's leg. The senior is going to line himself up for what looks like a 40-yard attempt. From the near hash, it's a high snap. They're going to fake it. Aubin's going to roll to his right. Nobody Looks downfield. Nobody's open. Throws into the end zone. It's intercepted by Franco. He's going to drop his right knee for a touchback. Didn't, didn't fool anybody. Uh -huh. That is going to be the final play of the first half. The Cardinals special teams alert. They come up with the game's first takeaway in the end zone on the final play of the first half. I don't really understand because there was nobody in the end zone, Nick. If you're gonna, if that's a, if that was called in from the sideline, then why wouldn't you have uh, another receiver, one receiver on the other side? I mean, this guy's got the arm; he can throw it anywhere. Oh no, but he he wasn't in the end zone, is what I'm saying. Yeah, Carberry fell down somewhere in yeah. the area of the eight yard I mean, line. You got to have a receiver in the end zone to throw it to. So a busted play. Yep. Although it looked like a designed fake. And but in the end, it stays a 28-21 to 21 ball game. Back and forth as we expected yeah. here 
in Nashua. It's been an entertaining game, a lot of points. And both these teams delivering so far so a lot through of, the midway point. A lot of good football. 21 Dover trailing BG mm. at halftime. All right, we'll step aside, come back. We'll have the band on the field, I believe. And then Steve and I break down that first half, preview the second, and look at the out-of-town scoreboard as well. A fun one brewing here at Stello Stadium. Halftime, BG 28, Dover 21. You are watching our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week, presented by Beals Insurance. Broadcast today, as it always is, is brought to you by Beals Insurance Agency, with locations now in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance will get you both the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Just call 603-471-9999 or visit BealsInsurance.com to request a free quote and start saving money today. Again, that's BealsInsurance.com. How can you reach your team's fundraising goals at no risk and no cost? MG Sports offers a variety of products to make your team's fundraiser a success. Their products include tickets and discount cards to hundreds of local businesses. MG Sports now has a digital platform where athletes can raise funds in the comfort and safety of their own home. Don't waste another season. Raise more funds than ever before and become another football program in New Hampshire that sets fundraising records every season. MG Sports, fundraising made easy. Visit MG sportsfundraising.com to start raising money for your team today. The New Hampshire Tomahawks promote the highest level of club lacrosse competition, not just in the state, but in the country. Looking to get recruited? Director Chris Cameron keeps an open dialogue with the nation's top college lacrosse coaches. Over 400 New Hampshire Tomahawks alumni have played at the college level, including the ACC, Big East, Big Ten, Ivy, NESCAC, NE10, and more. New Hampshire Tomahawks coaching staff has over 100 coaches, including current high school, varsity, and college coaches. The Tomahawks offer training for players of all ages, clinics, camps, and leagues, along with spring, summer, and fall elite teams. So play with the best. The New Hampshire Tomahawks, showcase and development for college lacrosse. Visit NewHampshireTomahawks.com and girls.nhtomahawks.com. Hey, I'm Chad, the owner of New Hampshire iPhone Repair. We're New Hampshire's most trusted and affordable repair shop for your iPhone, iPad, iPod, and even Android needs. Don't worry, we're affordable, reliable, and we back our parts with a lifetime warranty. And do you know what the best part is? No, what? We can repair your phone while you wait. I know, that's why I'm here. Oh, I know, Mrs. Green. Here's your iPad, good as new. Bring your phone into New Hampshire iPhone Repair today. Buy local and save big. For over 26 years, Spectrum Monthly has been providing great local offers from businesses in New Hampshire and Massachusetts. Delivered to your mailbox every month. Spectrum is chock full of savings from your favorite businesses. From local restaurants and retail stores to entertainment, fitness, and home improvement services. You'll have easy access to thousands of dollars in savings, including exclusive offers for Spectrum readers. Every month, enter our readership contest for a chance at winning cash and local gift certificates. Spectrum Monthly. No one brings you better offers.
dollars for this thing. Oh. <laughs> Give it up for a One last big hearty thank you, especially to the seniors in the Bishop Curtin and Cardinals marching band.
Halftime here at Stello Stadium. Bishop Girton in a shootout with Dover. Out in front of the Green Wave, 28 to 21 here in our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week. Presented by Beals Insurance, Nick Anastas. Steve Beals with you. It's the 8-9 matchup here in the preliminary round of the Division I tournament. The winner will take on top-seeded Pinkerton in Derry next weekend. BG got the start. They wanted a touchdown on the ground from Mike McDonough opened up the scoring less than three minutes in. It was 7-0 Cardinals on the next Dover drive. They throw an interception. Ryan Aubin, Ryder Aubin, picked off by A.J. Holmes, who brought it to the house from 53 yards out to make it 14-0. Then Dover came alive late in that first quarter, got on the board with a one-yard touchdown run from Aubin to make it 14-7, and that was our score at the end of one. Dover would tie the game about midway through the second quarter on an Aubin to Brady McGinnis hookup from 22 yards out, 14 apiece at that point, and then Three combined touchdowns in the final 247. McDonough, a two-yard run to reclaim the lead for his team. BG back in front by seven at that point, 21-14, but it did not last long. Just 13 seconds later on the ensuing kickoff, McGinnis brought it to the house from 91 yards out, a 91-yard kick return for six. Extra point tied the game at 21. BG, they come right back down the field and find the end zone on a McDonough to Cody Shemansky. 22-yard hookup through the air. 28-21 at that point. And then Dover, a fake field goal on the final play of the half with two seconds left. Aubin picked off in the end zone by Sam Franco. And that brings us to where we are now. 28-21, BG in front. And the Cardinals set to receive the kick to open up the third quarter. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I bet you the Cardinals right now were really happy that uh, they deferred in, in the beginning of this game. And I, I found most games, it works in the favor if you do defer. Uh, and, and that's You get the football at the time that you know what the matchup is like and even what the score is like. Uh, boy, i got to tell you, Nick, uh, so many players you could talk about, Bailey, um, uh, you know, Shimalecki, uh, what, what, a, what a great job he's doing as a sophomore. Uh, but obviously these two quarterbacks just, just lead it. Uh, they're leaders. Uh, they're extremely effective. Um, if, if you're at the next level in football, no matter what division, I mean, certainly uh, you've got to look at these guys at the gifts that they have and the way that they command their offense and execute to a high level. Yes, they've got a couple good receivers each, but they still get it done. We, one of the quick thing, one of the keys of the game, Nick, was who's going to get protection. Well, they're both getting protection, and this is why we've got uh, an unsurprising 28-21 tight game. Uh, BG's got an opportunity here. They get the ball. They, if, they, if their offense can remain potent as it has been, they can go down and score. They open that up with a uh, with a uh, a two score uh, lead going in. You know, after a, a drive, that's really going to put the pressure going to increase the percentage of their chances to come out winners but boy i gotta tell you dover that response in the first quarter after they were down 14 nothing has changed the face of this game where now you just look at these teams as if they're both gunslingers they're they're they're, they're both extremely well coached uh, they're executing their offensive plans i th i have no doubt in my mind that after exeter and uh, after last week with bg these both of these teams have had an outstanding week of practice because you're seeing it on the field right now penalties yes talked about officiating off the screen the officials are communicating every time there's any question and they're doing it well no egos there on the field these guys are out there to get the right call done uh, we can sit here and agree with a holding call there's holding on every play it's just up to your discretion overall these guys have got a tremendous response amount of responsibility nick with, with these two type offenses using the whole field uh, they've got a lot of responsibility with five officials. I was talking to Jason Roby and Tom at halftime. I said you could almost use a sixth official out there to divide the uh, passing uh, end of things in in in, uh, in thirds. Because, but they're doing a heck of a job, all things considered, getting this game right. As we take a look at some of the earlier scores from today, these are all preliminary round final scores. Londonderry, the number four seed, a forty-six to nothing mm -hmm. beatdown yeah. of Wyndham. Yeah. They eliminate the Jaguars, they move on, and they will face Exeter in Londonderry after the Blue Hawks outlast the Keene Blackbirds today by a final score of 31 
to 13. Salem, the sixth seed, they're going to meet Bedford in Bedford next week as they put up 55 today, Steve, over Spalding in a 55 34 victory. Congratulations to the Blue Devils. And in the game that we broadcasted, what was that score? 55 34 <laughs> Salem. And in the game that we broadcasted Speaking of great earlier quarterbacks. from today, Nashua North put up the first 27 points of the game against Alvern and hang on to win it by a final of 27 to 14. They will travel to the Seacoast on Friday night to take on Portsmouth in the 2 7 matchup. So the final first round game is this one here. We're at halftime. It's 28-21. The winner will move on to, to take on Pinkerton yeah. next weekend. Well, uh, I, you know, Pinkerton's 9-0. I, 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 think the, I think the benchmark has been sent number one seed right there. But there's no question that these, that, that these teams are playing good football against two good football teams here. Uh, and uh, whoever wins this game, Nick, um, you know, you've got to have another great week of practice. But there's something here in this game that if either one of these te teams, whoever pulls it out, has got something clearly they've shown the first half that they can build on. If they continue this sort of play and play tight like this in the, uh, I should say tight, but I mean playing good football, uh, good situational football, everybody contributing. You know, at that point, uh, uh, Pinkerton's got to look and say, hey, and, and they always with Under Coach O'Reilly, they're going to take everybody seriously. C can you just tell me that... Uh, that um, the game, uh, the Salem game in Spalding was what score? 55-34. So wow. a combined 89 points in that one. Wow. But 34 points by Spalding. you got to give Kevin Hebert a lot yeah. of credit the way he turned that team around uh, in the second half of the year. And scoring 34 points on Salem is not an easy job. That's a good defense. But how about Salem sc scoring 55? They're, they're, they're a team to beat. Line drive kick is going to open up the second half. This ball is going to make its way into the end zone for a touchback. And Bishop Girton will come out to their own 20-yard line to begin the drive. Well, BG 6-3 and three during the regular season. That included an out-of-state win up in Maine. Dover, they also faced a team from Maine in their one out-of-state contest. And this tied in week two, they finish up with a final overall record of 5-3-1. and one. Nick, you have experience that go back decades in the broadcasting business. Have you ever been in a more spirited club than uh, press box than this one tonight? I think the more appropriate phrase would be frat house <laughs> up here. It's a Let me tell you, I'm having a ball. Semi-hostile working environment yeah. for sure. <laughs> On first and ten, McDonough is going to let loose, and shemansky has got his fifth catch, makes his way up the sideline to about the 30-yard line. Close to a first down, a pickup of about 10. Look at a guy Shemansky Michael's side. Not a has real been the go-to receiver again for Mike McDonough. Look, look at this guy. He is not a big guy like Auburn. But let me tell you, he's got a big arm. He, 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 he can fire a football with a... Uh, he, he almost anticipates where the receiver is going. They have great chemistry uh, between them. So uh, Mike McDonough, very impressive tonight. The most productive combo in Division One, based yes. on the numbers in the regular season. Meanwhile, Holmes going to grind to a halt. Lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Carberry leading the defensive effort there for Dover. No gain on the first down run. We'll bring up second down and ten. Yep. And we saw Holmes with the pick six in that first half defensively. He was also busy with four carries of his own. Make it five in oh, the first block. half. This is Will Helmke trying to find the 35-yard line. Is going to be spun down at about the 34 instead. Yeah. A gain of four will bring up a third down and six. Nice block here by A.J. Holmes, but, boy, the recovery of the Dover defense. I thought he's going to have some room to run, and look at him. He comes in. Who was that? I couldn't tell who that was, but I, was I wish McGinnis I could. on the tackle. Was it McGinnis? Okay, yeah, what a terrific job. His second tackle of the drive. He just closes. And, of course, McGinnis, with the ball in his hands, has been dangerous. A 22-yard touchdown catch and a 91-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. Uh, you know BG wanted this. They they, uh, they wanted to go down and score this, but how about Dover? Dover looking to force a three and out on third and six. McDonough going to air He's it out. It. He's got a man wide open. It's Ronan Ballesteri, and he will not be caught. A touchdown that's going to register 70 yards on the stat sheet. 
Third touchdown toss for McDonough wow. as Ronan Ballesteri checks into this game in a major way. BG back out in front, 34-21. Folks, watch uh, Mike McDonough check down here. He knows he's open, and he says he checks down. See that? And then all of a sudden he looks out. At, that drives everybody in when he's looking underneath. What a terrific job. Got to be a breakdown right there, Nick, because he, Ballesteros, uh, released. Watch the check down. See, he, he's looking like he's going to go off off to the left. That that forces the corner to take a step forward, and then he, throw, he, he, he just guns it right down. Perfect pass. Touchdown. The points coming fast. The little is tonight. The little things, Nick. 35-21, a 70-yard hookup. BG has rebuilt their 14-point lead from look back in the first quarter. Look at them look over to the sideline over there. And what happens with that? And then number, what you see number eight with his hands on his helmet? He says, oh, my, I I was sure it was going to go outside. What a terrific job That's a senior by Mike safety, McDonough Jacob selling Bernier. that play. Bernie, your bit. And McDonough made him pay as Ballesteri untouched into the end zone from 70 yards out. Yeah. That is a big score right there to come back. Absolutely. So, BG, they've scored now the last 14 points dating back to late in the second quarter. And that's the difference right now, 35-21. Cardinals have never trailed tonight. They scored the first 14 of the game. Dover came back with two touchdowns of their own. And then it was a flurry of scores in the final three minutes. We got an onside kick here. It takes a faulty bounce, and it's going to draw a penalty flag yeah. here for illegal procedure. A lot of frustration in the sidelines. If that went 10 yards, I think BG comes up with it, Nick, and that was the issue is that uh, that was a good, good – I don't know as I would have done it. I'm not suggesting that at all, but I'm saying – you got to admit the element of surprise because nobody – that is in their favor. And if he – watch them here. If he kicks this – maybe we can see it from the aerial view. Watch. There's nobody over there. They own it if it goes 10 yards, yeah. and it just doesn't hit the 10-yard marker. As a result of that, it's a penalty, and they're going to have a long, uh, long kick. But you, if you're going to do it, you want element of surprise, right? But I think it's a risky call. Uh but you're right, another yard, and that one is a live ball. There's nobody uh, anywhere, you know, much more than a yard outside of the hash mark on Dover, and uh, it was wide open for him. Matter of fact, he may, if that gave a good bounce, he could have potentially taken that all the way or deeper down the field. Instead, it's first and 10 Dover at the BG 44-yard line, so prime starting field position here for the Green Wave. They go to McGinnis on first and ten, a stiff arm left side, but Holmes is going to drag him down at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, good team tackling right there. They're swarming to the ball. It's the third tackle tonight for the junior, A.J. Holmes. Uh, uh, I'm watching uh, uh, Ryder Aubin uh, talk to Coach Kumba on the sidelines, Nick, and I believe it's Coach Kumba, or maybe it's just one of the offensive play callers, and he was, went to the sidelines says, uh, designing uh, with his hands a play that he wants to run. Be very interested. He may have seen something. We'll see how BG handles it. Second down and ten. It looks like he got the play he wanted when he ran back. Another three-man front for BG, although they look like they're going to bring heat on the top edge. Aubin takes a quick pause, now does take the snap, looks to his right, throws right. It's a dart, and it's caught yep. for what looks like a first down. Well, he's probably seeing the cornerback play, play off. No screw. Uh, no, the cornerbacks are no longer screwed down here. They're giving them seven yards. That opens up that inside slant, Nick, every single time, especially if the linebackers are not staying back and they're trying to protect the run. So if that was what Ryder called, that was a good call. But defended, covered pretty well, but nice pass. Sam Franco with the tackle. Yep. Ten-yard gain, first and ten. Football at the 33-yard line of the Cardinals. Hand off, Bailey, little stutter step, and again, that second effort is going to pick up some positive yardage there, maybe a gain of three down to the 30-yard yeah, line. I've come to accept that. It's not that Bailey is just the way he is. There is no second, third effort with Bailey. It's just the way he is. He's not going to stop until you talk about the law of inertia going into effect. A body in motion stays in motion with that guy, and he makes you work to stop it. Little communication here going on between uh, Ryder and Bailey. Bailey now 41 yards unofficially on the ground on seven carries. Looks Second like down and eight. Bailey is the tailback. They fake to him. 
And the throw is taken in by the freshman Lewis in the flat. He's going to dance at the oh. 30. Shimalicki is going to wrestle him down Great. right there. Great Just a gain of one. So now third down and seven. That's a good open field tackle there by the senior. Now, do you realize what it takes during the week to go through the whole playbook of scout team, Nick, and get these plays to be, uh, to get it in your DNA that you understand what's happening given the layout of the play? That's exactly what happened there with number two, Cody Zemanski. What a terrific job. Well, Zemanski, excuse me. As corrected by Mike D McDonough at halftime. I believe it's Shemansky. Right. Shemansky. Four me. minutes in, third quarter. Right. Hard count here from Aubin. And it looks like now the senior is going to change the play. It's a five-receiver set yeah. for Dover. He's got to watch out here. The play uh, delay a game. Defense. He got it off. Going to bring an extra man. The quick throw is handled by the tight end, Carberry. And that's close to a first down. Well, it is a first down because of that extra uh, yard after the catch of lunging forward. Nice job. Eight-yard grab. Who, who, who caught and that? enough Nick? to move the sticks. That's Bryce Carberry's fourth catch. Job. The senior tight end had a big first half. Yeah. How about Auburn with a nice throw there? Up to 54 yards now receiving on four grabs. These are two fun teams to watch, let me tell you. Dover trailing at 35-21. Just over four minutes gone by third quarter. Green Wave hoping to get back in the red zone here, and they will. It's Auburn going to spin away from Shemansky at the 10-yard line. Fayette is going to drop him at the eight. Another first down for Dover on a 13-yard gain. Yeah, he's he's a bull. When, when, and uh, good downfield blocking. We're going to see the downfield blocking right here. Got him at about another seven yards af after the uh, watch over here. Number 11, what a great job. Number 11. It's Carberry. That's Carberry. Doing it all, Nick. He's, it, whatever you want me to do, I'll do for my uh, every play for my team. That's just great work. Aubin now quietly up to 57 yards on the ground. I believe that. Another empty set here. It takes the gun snap. They fake to Lewis. They go up the middle with Aubin, and wow. he's in the end zone for a touchdown. It's a seven-yard touchdown run. And Dover answers the bell just like that. With nearly five minutes gone by in the third, it's back to a one-score game again at 35-27. Not sure it would have given Dover an opportunity to get a short field, Nick, because... Uh, what that did is put him like what 45, 50 yard line in that situation, and that just pl that that just opens up Coach Kumba's playbook, Nick, because they're in your zone. You really wanted to pin them deep there if you could, but uh, I understand the element of surprise. But the short field is something I'm not sure I would have given Dover. Extra point attempt from Johnson up and good, and it's 35-28. This back and forth seesaw <laughs> affair this. continues here at Stello Stadium. It's been a fun one. The eight nine matchup. The winner will head to Derry next weekend to take on top seed Pinkerton in the quarterfinal oh, round. Yeah. Good stuff. We so get another look at that touchdown run. Aubin up the middle. Had one, two, three, four, five carries for 44 yards in the first half. And back-to-back -back runs on the tail end of that drive, totaling 20 yards, including that seven-yard score. Yeah. So Dover... Right back of the football game. They've trailed most of the night. They've never had the lead tonight. But certainly have wrestled the momentum back, at least for the moment. Trailing now just by 7, 35, 28. Johnson will kick. And we'll see if he tries to kick deep here. They tended to avoid the deep men in the first half. That's this one a little poocher. That's where you want to kick it right there. That's going to take a bounce toward the sideline. It's fielded there by Dolan. The sophomore takes a step to his right out of bounds at the 25-yard line. That's what Coach O'Reilly was talking about when he says don't give them an opportunity to run it back, and I agree. That's what you get them on the 25-yard line, Nick, with no return, and you're forcing, what, another 25 yards before you even get to midfield. And you change the playbook when you do that. When you're in your own end, you can't start out with like you do on there on on the other team's 45. And um, you know, in any situation, that that's the way it started. But that's a nice kick and a nice cover right there by Dover. So Mike McDonough back at the controls here for the Cardinals. And a four receiver set two to each side, and somebody made one early there Bailey. for Dover. That's Bailey who has brought heat consistently off that edge, stepped into the neutral zone. And it looks like just committed Dover's fifth penalty of the evening. Well, one of the watch, that's why you always continually change cadence, Nick. Don't let them settle in and start timing your cadence. And what uh, what uh, 
Mike did right there is he, he mixed it up, and now Bailey says, I, I know what it is. I'm going to go after it, and there you go. So you can help your offensive line and your team by having a good cadence structure that you can work around. Five penalty f for Dover, 50 penalty yards. McDonough is hit as he throws on first and five. Yeah, he got that's And that one ends up incomplete. Yeah, he got banged pretty good. Uh, that's, that's why left tackles make big money, Nick. Right. And they make more and more every single year. Got to hit that block. But was that Bailey or who, who was that? We're going to see it here on the on the thing. But you're going to see he comes right around. Actually, that was a that was a roll. Left, wasn't left tackle. It was one of those edge blitzes, blitzes edge again. Edge blitzes, and it worked and it really Bailey. well. And it's blindside, which is always the worst. Second down and five. This time it looks like the blitz may come up the middle. Nope, they're going to bring Bailey on the edge again. Screen instead, Shemansky, at and look at the speed. Down the wow. middle, one man to beat inside the 20-yard line. He will not be caught. Bring this one up for another 70-yard score. It's McDonough to Shemansky. A pair of 70-yard touchdown throws for the senior quarterback in this quarter. Yeah. All the obvious stuff is there, but watch Shemansky's first three steps after the catch and the acceleration and the separation he gets on this play. Look at this. Boom, he's gone. He's beating some fast guys, too. We were talking about team speed off record right there. <laughs> yeah. Well, those first three steps after the reception were just absolutely – that was prolific running right there after the catch. Boy, these guys, what a terrific battery these two gentlemen are, Nick, on the field. It's just uh, – It's been impressive to watch all season long as nobody in Division One threw for more passing yards than That's Mike That's the best McDonough, connection in the state. And nobody threw for more – or nobody caught more receiving yards – than Cody Shemansky. You know so. what the thing about it, Nick, is it's by a wide margin. By a wide the, margin. The number two is way behind. 70-yard hookup there. McDonough with a pair of 70-yarders in this quarter, which is not even halfway over. Extra point looming here. A little bit of a delay on field as we get another look at that screen that goes for big yards. Yeah, Dover just, uh, they, they have done a terrific job trying to stay in this game, Nick. Uh, tying it up pushing it within one touchdown, but every time that happens, BG's able to get a big connection or, or, or a really a well-sequenced drive down the field to create that two-score separation. I don't, don't go away, folks. This game, if you watch the first half and the, or the first almost three quarters here, let me tell you, Dover is not out of this game by any stretch the way they are moving the ball as well. So, Got a clock issue here. And it looks like we're ready to go. Extra point attempt on the way from Connor Lennon. It's been a perfect five for five so yeah. far, and he's now six for six. Yeah. 41 28. Becomes 42 28. After yeah. that one splits the uprights. And this scoring summary, Steve, is starting to read like a novel. <laughs> As we've seen a combined. What ten touchdowns right. so far? And we're only midway through the third. What novel would you, what what novel would you call it? <laughs> You're a well, liter very literate man. Probably approaching Lord of the Rings territory whoa, at this whoa. point. I was going to say a tale of two cities. Lord of the Rings is over a thousand pages. I'm not quite sure what the Dickens novel runs. Yeah, that'd take me a thousand years to read. <laughs> no, it's in the ballpark. What a game! It is a BG great game. BG scored the first two touchdowns of the game. McDonough on a run. AJ Holmes. On a 53-yard touchdown return, Dover came back with two scores of their own, a one-yard run by Ryder Aubin at the end of the first quarter, and then a hookup to Brady McGinnis from Aubin early in the second quarter. Final three minutes, back and forth we went. McDonough, two-yard touchdown run, put BG back in front. The ensuing kickoff taken to the house by McGinnis on a 91-yard return. Final 38 seconds, McDonough to Shemansky from 22 yards out. Brought us to 28-21, BG at halftime. Yeah. Third quarter, first drive, first 90 seconds. McDonough to Ronan Ballesteri for a 70-yard hookup. Dover makes quick work. Less than two minutes later, their drive ends with a 7-yard touchdown run from Ryder Aubin. And then a moment ago, another 70-yard hookup, McDonough to Shkomansky, and that is where we are. 42-28 here in this 8-9 preliminary round matchup. The winner will take on top-seeded Pinkerton in Derry next weekend. And that is not an easy task right no. there. No, 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 in no. Pinkerton against Pinkerton is not an easy task. 
Pinkerton, uh, one of three <laughs> teams in Division One to finish a perfect nine and zero. Of course, the number two seed Portsmouth ran the table, and defending champion Bedford somehow ended up as the number three seed. Just the way it goes. I mean, yeah, yeah, but that's a that's a tough one because they're they're. Uh, they're going to have to host Salem. Salem. Yeah. Fresh off a 55-point performance today. Right. They, they downed Spalding in a shootout of their own. Already got the quarterfinal round matchup set, except for the aforementioned winner of this game will take on Pinkerton. We're going to have Exeter traveling to Londonderry in the 4-5 matchup. And Salem is the sixth seed. We'll visit Bedford in Bedford next weekend. Yep. You know, we talk about those three teams that uh, drew a bye. But there's no question, with only three, Londonderry, the way they're playing football, they are part of that four-horse iron that, uh, that, that is just uh, playing uh, lights-out football. Uh, remember, the, remember the original score against Wisdom, Wyndham, and uh, it was, what, 20, 27? 21-14. 21-14, something like that. Today, 46 nothing. Yeah, not, not tonight. Uh, Londonderry, so. of course, 8-1 and during the regular season. Yeah. And, Steve, if they somehow manage to get back, to the state championship game. It would be for the fourth time in yeah, five in years. Five years. That's, that's quite a feat. And, of course, the other game was played here at Stello Stadium. Yes. It was Nashua North with a win over Alvern, 27-14 the final. So North will head to Portsmouth for the quarterfinal round. That will be a Friday night affair at 6 o'clock thought, in Portsmouth. Uh, thought that uh, I, obviously we know the obvious uh, you know great players that are on Nashua North, but to me, Nick, there's been a lot of coaching going on since the last time I saw them because there's other players that have really built a solid base, a good foundation, that are playing good football, good hard-nosed football as well. And I thought the trenches and the interior guys for Nashua North played as a unit extremely well. And Alvarin uh, had, what is it, five and four? Uh, Five, yeah, five and four record, and uh, they're they're a, uh, 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 they're not a pushover by any stretch. Coach Lee did a good job with them this year, and Nashua North uh, showed uh, that they belong uh, in the quarterfinals for sure. Meanwhile, we have a delay on the field. I still think it may be a clock issue here at yep. Stello Stadium. Well, a while. Oh, it's actually a chain issue, Steve. Oh. The first down marker. Yeah, well, football is broken as they attend to it on the far sideline and around the 30-yard line. Not something you can really do without the chain attacked, you know? So, I wonder if there's an extra one floating around in the bowels of Stello Stadium. You would figure that there'd be a backup handy somewhere. Officials speaking with both head coaches and the game crew continuing to Work hard to get this thing, get this thing fixed here. It's been a several minute delay at this point. All right, I think we're set. They get a set. Officials blow the whistle and ready to go now. It's forty-two twenty-eight here as we approach the midway point, third quarter. Dover's got three returnees deep, including the speeding speedster, the freshman, Amari Lewis, who's the deepest of them all back at the five-yard line. He's going to retreat to the end zone and won't bring it out. It's a good kick there by Lennon. That one traveled nearly 60 yards in the air off the tee. Dover will bring it out to the 20-yard line. Trailing here by a couple of scores yet again, 42-28. Well, Dover, led by Coach Eric Kumba, Ryder Aubin, and a very strong season, as we know, as one of the finalists in the first ever Yukika yeah. Player of the Year Award, one of the final ten. The winner and the three finalists will be announced a couple of weeks from now. And Mike McDonough was also on that ballot as well for Bishop Girton. So two of the best all-around quarterbacks going chin-to-chin chin here. On oh. first and ten, it's a screen for the freshman Ben Allen. 
And a good move after the catch. He's going to net 11 yards and a Dover first down. I think Dover didn't come here to win this game. They got their offensive lineman, number 76 and number 75 out there, Nick, all the way out downfield. So Ryan Henderson and Liam McNeil. Yeah, well, that's impressive, Nick, when, the, when, the, when offensive linemen go down the field, want to do every single thing that they can to help their team. Second catch for Allen. First and ten, Dover looking to pick up the tempo. They go on the slant, and it's oh. incomplete. Diving attempt there for Sam Gruby. I, I hate to see receivers dive uh, as they're approaching the middle of the field, Nick, on an, in, on an inseam. Um, always train my guys to do never leave your feet. You, you keep your feet. If, you, if, you're, if you're still and you uh, want to jump up, fine. But, boy, that's... So the drop will bring Good up effort. second down and ten. Good effort. Gruby right. held without a catch, but wishes he could have that one back. Yeah. Cardinals again look like they're going to bring pressure off the edge. Dover oh. counters with a run. McGinnis is going to bounce it left side. He's got a first down. He'll step out of bounds, shy of midfield. At about the 47, maybe the 48-yard line after a gain of 12 or 13. Now look here in the replay, Nick, with uh, Ballastieri fighting for the outside position. Probably saved a touchdown right here. Watch. Watch number 15. He's fighting, and he gets off of that block, and he slows him down just enough so he couldn't go all the way. Those are little things in games. That extra work. What do we got here? Another penalty? I think it's encroachment against yeah, the, I think you're right. the nose guard. That's Sam Fox. The man over the ball for BG may have flinched there. First penalty of the second half. Is it me against Bishop Girton? Is it me or this third quarter is really dragging? I mean, it feels like there's been a lot more content than well, five we, minutes and we've 35. Had, we've had three touchdowns and a delay. Yeah. Well, there you go. Well, at least you got straight answer for a straight question. I'm. All, <laughs> I like that, Nick. Into the flat, McGinnis trying to break off. A, what? No gain. He gets back to the line of scrimmage on first and five. It's yep. a good effort there by Holmes yep. to drag him down for his third tackle. Yeah. His fourth tackle. Excuse me. So second and five. And Dover, again, after a brief huddle, is going to get right back to the line of scrimmage here as we move inside of six minutes to go third quarter. Yep. Dover has trailed most of the night. Going to face what looks like a five-man front here. Out of the gun snap. It's a dive play. I think that's McGinnis inside the 45. Tripped yep. up by Fox at about the 44-yard line. They'll get three there to set up a third and two. Clear four-down territory here. When you're down two touchdowns, third quarter in the other uh, team zone, you don't have to get it all at once here. Third and three. McGinnis looks left, takes a snap. Going to throw left. Caught by the tight end in the flat. He's got a first down down to the 40. Russell down by the sophomore Hudson Schmidt. Stop the clock. He was able to get out of bounds. Thinking ahead. Who made that tackle, Nick? Schmidt. Schmidt, yeah. Good, good job hanging on. That's a heavy guy to bring down. Rugged guy to bring down. The sophomore has played well. Yeah, he has. Had a big pass breakup back in the first quarter. Meanwhile... We have another delay here, and I think it, it's another chain issue here, Steve. The, oh, boy. The chain gang has had their hands full here in this third quarter. Well, you need a backup set in the, uh, in the back room there. Well, we'll take this pause to remind you that our broadcast tonight is brought to you by Beals Insurance. Locations in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance will get you the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Visit BealsInsurance.com. Also by MG Sports Fundraising. That's fundraising made easy. MG Sports Fundraising is the official fundraising partner of Friday Night Lights New Hampshire. Visit MGSportsFundraising.com. Start raising money for your team today. By New Hampshire iPhone Repair. It's done while you wait. And it's backed by their lifetime warranty. Now with five locations in southern New Hampshire and on the seacoast, visit NewHampshireiPhonerepair.com. By the New Hampshire Tomahawks, showcase and development for college lacrosse. Visit NHTomahawks.com and also girls.nhtomahawks.com. And finally, by Spectrum Monthly, powerful local advertising solutions. Find out more 
at SpectrumMonthly.com. Nick and Ask this, Steve Beals with you. It's our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week presented by Beals Insurance. Dover, inside of five minutes, third quarter. They go back to the air on first and ten, and that one too hot to handle for the tight end Carberry in and out of his hands. Yeah. And now second and ten it's on the way. a dangerous tip right here, Nick. Watch. This goes up in the air, wide open for someone to intercept. But fortunately for the green wave, nobody was there. A rare misfire there for Ryder Aubin. Yeah, he, he put some mustard on that ball. Uh, pretty, those are hard to catch when they're sailing higher as, they, as you're coming to you. And a shootout tonight between Aubin and his counterpart, Mike McDonough of Bishop Girton. Both teams have found touchdowns through the air and on the ground. Play fake on second and ten. Going to rifle this down the middle, and Shemansky able to jump the route and knock it down incomplete. Wow. Nearly came up with the interception intended for Lewis. BG will take it. It's third and ten. Well, I imagine, Nick, if you're, if you're in practice every day defending Mike Madonna, you learn how to play defensive backfield. And these quarterbacks, both of them have that same kind of velocity in which they throw it. But the recovery speed on both of these defensive backcourts have been excellent tonight. BG's defense with two takeaways in that first half. One was a pick six. Mm -hmm. That one nearly the third turnover. Almost another one. Third and ten. Cardinal fans stomping on the bleachers here at Stello Stadium. Trying to inspire the defense. Four-man rush. Aubin roll out right side. Throw off the back foot. And this one incomplete. That's a big drop right there. A sliding catch attempt near the stick. Goes off the hands of the intended target, I believe. That was the freshman, Allen. Incomplete, brings up fourth and ten. Yeah, he did a great job getting behind the sticks in the first down area. But just lost concentration there, Nick. <coughs> For just a split second. Allen, who's been big. With a couple of grabs tonight, but couldn't reel that one in. So now fourth and ten. Dover. Hoping to extend the drive here, trailing by a couple of touchdowns. Four and a half to go, third quarter. Again, the BG fan base making noise here, shaking the bleachers now. Fourth and ten, Aubin, four-man rush, steps up, throws near side, and incomplete. A lot of hands going back and forth there, Nick. He wanted the call. McGinnis lobbying for the penalty marker. He won't get it. No flag on the play. Bishop Girton is going to take over on downs. We'll take a look here. No, it's that Holmes in coverage. That doesn't look like interference to me, Nick. Holmes able to turn his head. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And stay with him stride for stride. A little bit of hand fighting there, but they're not going to call that on fourth and ten. Well, DB coming up. DB is coming up big for Bishop Girton in these tough situations. So, big stop there for the Cardinals. Their 14-point lead still intact. And they got the ball. They're going to take over, yeah, with good starting field position here, their own 40-yard line. But Coach Kuma really has to go for that, Nick, when you're in territory. All right, McDonough back at the wheel here. He's going to look to his right. Coach Nalen may have just changed up the play. Mm -hmm. He did. Two receivers each side, four-man front, four-man rush. The throw, Shemansky, his catch. We're going to bring him up near bounce. midfield. And he's close to the 50, maybe a yard or two shy. Gain of eight, maybe nine to bring up second and short. Didn't think he got out of bounds, Nick. I, I thought he was able to hold in, but they're going to say stop the clock. So, But, boy, if you're an offensive coordinator, we talk about this all the time in a game like this, you love second down and two. Let's see if he gets out of bounds. I think he fought to stay in personally. No, he stepped out of bounds when he was up. Boy, these guys are right on it, Nick. Shemansky, 142 yards tonight and counting. He's done it on just seven grabs. Oh, Screen here. They're going to blow it up. Helmke goes nowhere. In fact, he loses two, maybe three yards, and now a third and five coming up. I would say they knew that one was coming by the offensive set. I mean, when you got like three guys running to the, to the point of attack ahead of time, that's a pretty good read there. Third and five. Inside of four minutes, third quarter. Dover needs a stop here. Again, two receivers each side. Ballesteri in motion. McDonough's going to roll out to his right. Eyes downfield. Got to get rid of it. He's hit as he throws. 
And this one is incomplete. Yeah, situation there where Mike wants to release that ball out of bounds quicker than that, Nick, or just sprint out of bounds one or the other. Those are the sort of plays. If, if they get you before you release the ball forward, that could be a fumble. Good job by Carberry to come up yes. and make contact. Forces Nobody's the there. incompletion, and BG is going to have to punt the football here with 3.42 to go in the third. Plenty of time here for Dover. Got a whole quarter left, and then another four minutes on top of that. This is as long a quarter as we've certainly seen all day, Nick. Punt from Lennon. It's a good one. End over end. Takes a bounce near the 20. It'll They'll be down by Franco at about the 23, maybe the 24-yard line. Special teams, good job right there. Got good good value out of that punt. Punts have been at a premium tonight. There's a combined 10 touchdowns on the board. I don't recall a game, Nick, in a while where, uh, not in this play and a few others, but almost every takeover on downs, the team that took it over has been in great field position. Right. But... Not here, but not this case, but yeah. in general, that's been the theme mm -hmm. this afternoon. Saw that earlier in the North game as that game unfolded as well. Yep. North beating Alvern earlier today to advance to the quarters. Titans will take on Portsmouth on the Seacoast on Friday night. The winner of this one gets Pinkerton in Derry next weekend. All right, Aubin on first and 10 to his left. Going to lower the shoulder and fight for a couple Good extra game. yards up across the 30. So about the 31-yard line, call it a gain of seven to set up a second down and three. Yeah, they'll take that there, Nick, as they work it out of their own territory. I doubt very much Coach Coombe. With this great defensive back play, I don't think Coach Coombe is going to take a lot of risk. I don't think in his own zone until he gets it across the midset. He'll use that running attack between he and Bailey. Or maybe a short little screen or something like that, but um, we'll see. Cardinals bring an extra man to the line of scrimmage. Dover counters with a man in motion. McGinnis the hand. It's a sweep near side. Cuts it up. Drops the shoulder. The steps out down. of bounds. Shy of the 40. Picks up the first down with ease there. Up yep. to about the 38-yard line officially. Yep. Gain of seven for McGinnis. Done some good things through the air, as we know. On the ground and on special teams as well, all in all. Good Very productive night for the senior. Yep, good job by Bailey coming around the corner and hitting that lead block there, which uh, helped. Man in motion this time is, is Bailey. Got some lane there. He's Bailey got some showing the speed. First down, going to stumble out of bounds in Cardinal territory at about the 43-yard line. That is good for 18 around the corner. Yeah, he... Um, that's his longest run tonight. He's got some wheels. And the thing is, one of the things that makes that work, Nick, is you got Ryder Aubin faking like he's going to get the ball and run to the other side. You've got to stay honest in the middle of the field. And then they throw a bunch of blockers at the point of attack. And with Bailey's running capability, no wonder why he picked up that yardage. Eight carries, 59 yards now unofficially for Bailey. Inside of three minutes, first and ten from the Cardinal 44. BG again going to crowd the line of scrimmage. Aubin's going to cock got back him. and fire. He's got, He's got Allen wide open for a touchdown. It's a 43-yard hookup, and we've got ourselves a one-score game yet again. Yeah, Sam Franco's upset at himself. He, I, I think he, it, he, they disguised that well, Nick. Watch here. Watch off, and it looks like he's going to be. He, he bought the idea that it was going to be a run, a jet to the left. And he came off. Wow. So, touchdown number 11 tonight, scored by these two teams. Nick, we saw him when we were watching Dover Portsmouth uh, and uh, the freshman. He, he, he's a good looking player. Yeah. He's uh, got a good future. Two freshmen. Mm -hmm. Prominent players in this Dover team. Yep. His classmate, Amari Lewis, has played well tonight and all yes, season long as well. So, Tucker Johnson's extra point is good, which means it's a seven point game again. 42 35 on the heels of an Aubin to Allen 43 yard touchdown hookup. Yeah, well, they just refuse to uh, allow a two score lead, Nick. Dover's tied it up, what, twice, three times, tied it up. 
14, 21, and 28. And uh, now they're back within one again. Then there's plenty of time left in this game. Still 2.33 left in this third quarter. It is just creeping. Yeah, we're over two hours now. Two hours, ten minutes in real time. Since this game kicked off at 6 o'clock Eastern. A lot of points on the board. A couple of delays in this third quarter due to field equipment issues. And now Johnson's kick from the 40 is going to send the return man, Dolan, retreating to the 15, cross the 20, up to the 30. Nice run. Around the 35 to the 38-yard line. Somebody got a hold of the back of his shirt, slowed him down, bought a, a split second there for the other defenders to get into it. So, Good return by the sophomore. Yeah. Again, pretty good starting field position. For the Cardinals. C.G. Andover. Got some underclassmen that are having a, a real impact on this game. Yeah. So that bodes well for their futures. Yeah. Speaks well of the program, as we yeah. know. First-year head coach, Anthony Malin. Trying to get the Cardinals back to the quarterfinal round for the third straight year. Dover under Eric Kumbo, hoping to get there after what a few a years' absence. Shemansky showing you the hands there on an 11-yard pickup. A first down. Tackle made there by Sam Gruby. Wow. Another grab for Shemansky as his monster night continues. Yep. And, boy, are they stacking on that, the yardage on that battery. He's got 153 yards now receiving. Dover going to bring a blitz, but the linebacker gets into the neutral zone early. Liam Gannon crept in, got caught by surprise there by the cadence, and it's going to cost his team five yards. It's Second costly. penalty. Second penalty since halftime against Dover. You know, one of the things, we you, you got to look at this BG team and where that offensive line was, Nick, in the beginning of the year and how the staff has been able to develop these guys and provide McDonough protection. And it's been uh, they've done a terrific job so far tonight. Both teams really have. Their offensive lines, one of our keys to the game, have uh, really provided both of these guys protection. That's why we got a 42-35 score. So the playbook wide open here on first and five, yep. and BG may have just changed the call. McDonough looks over to the sideline, and now looks like he's ready to go. Takes the snap. He's got time. Going to throw near side. Shemansky is there. The catch is made inside the 30. We're going to mark him right at the 30. Another big hook up there of 18 yards and a Cardinal first down. Yeah, he's so aware of where uh, McDonough's throwing it, Nick. He stopped his route, knew it was underneath early. His anticipation early is so, so good. Watch him come back for the ball because he knows underthrown. Gets up there, secures it. He knows how, how important it is to make that reception. The heck with yards after the catch. Make the reception. Move the ball down the field. Jacob Bernie or his second tackle. Such a smart player. Approaching the final minute, third quarter, first and ten from the 29. They go to the ground. Holmes Whoa. first through the line. Holmes is going to score. Untouched to the end zone for a 29-yard touchdown. A.J. Holmes, his first score on offense tonight, had a pick six on defense back in the first quarter. And BG now a point away from putting up 49 yeah. here and reestablishing that two-touchdown two lead. Impressive. Impressive. Yeah, great hole. Kind of an, they, they uh, spent too many resources in other areas defensively, Nick, and that just left that area of the field wide open. Good call in response to what was the package that was thrown at them, and uh, they're up by two scores again. Lennon remains perfect. Wow. Seven for seven on the extra point kicks. 49-35, our score with a minute 14 remaining, a 29-yard Touchdown run there by A.J. Holmes. Yeah, if you bet an over under here, you were better on the over for sure. You better have. Wow. 49-35 as this one has been back and forth, back and forth, yeah. back and forth. Holmes yeah. untouched there. Yeah, McDonough the sees it. He knows he's going position. in. And uh, they know how important getting that second score here going into the, not even yet the fourth quarter. Just amazing to me, Nick, the – Well, now it combined, what, 12 touchdowns? 12 touchdowns. Between these two teams. Yep. A lot of breaks in the action with that. I don't think you'll be seeing another 
onside kick. Reminder, Thursday night, back on the air for another edition of FNL Gridiron. We'll wrap up the first round action, and we'll preview the quarterfinal round as well with exclusive interviews from head coaches and media members. That's Thursday night, 6 o'clock, FNL Gridiron, presented by Beals Insurance only on Friday Night Lights, New Hampshire. Oh, nice kick. Lennon's got a good leg. He's going to pin the return man inside the two-yard line. This is Lewis, the freshman, across the 25 and cut down shy of the 30 at about the 29. I'll tell you, if he busted that, Nick, I don't know who was left to pick him up. So I don't know who made that tackle, but somebody scissored the legs there, and it's a darn good thing they did. We'll see it. Lewis has been busy tonight. Yes, he has. On the back end of this return unit for Dover. Yeah. So a minute eight remaining, third quarter. That band out there has been doing it all game in this cool weather. Yeah. Had a great performance. Yep. Pre-game nice of the national anthem. And halftime. One of the better sets as well, musically. Had some rolling stones there at halftime. Yeah, I saw that. Heard that. Hand off on a bounce right side. Bailey first down, but another flag is thrown. Bailey steps out of bounds near midfield, but there's a penalty marker down back at the 33-yard line. This may be a block in the back, Nick, actually, instead of a hold. I'm not sure. We'll figure it out. Is it the tight end? Uh, may have, may I, have been Carberry earlier in the run. Yeah. But the flag seemed to go late, later than that, Yeah, when it was outside. So... It might have been off screen, something that we didn't see to the left, like you say, that happened a little bit earlier, but not much. 65 yards yeah. in penalties tonight for Dover on seven infractions. Yeah, well, when you're in your own zone, you don't want to go backwards. You don't want to go backwards anytime, but when you're trying to start a drive and, and close, a, I mean, there is still time in this game for Dover. you got a whole quarter to go here on two high-production uh, high, uh, uh, high, uh, offenses. Uh, that's one of the things about running an effective spread, and that's a that's not an easy thing to do, but to run an effective spread is you're never out of the game if you're within a couple touchdowns and you've got, you know, you can, can score in three minutes or, or sooner. But uh, it is against over. So this will be like a holding call. Yeah, right at the line of scrimmage too, yep. so a first and 20 on the way with just over a minute to go, third quarter. Well, Dover back in a familiar spot. They've got the ball down 14. It's been the case more often than not tonight. Shifting D-line, four down linemen for the Cardinals. First and 10, first and 20 handoff, rather, is for Bailey. And another flag comes in late. He's chopped down at the 25-yard line, but again, another penalty on the way. Yeah. Well, there's penalties on every play, as we've discussed. Right, and it's more important, I think, for the officials to weigh in whether or not the infraction was relevant to the outcome of the play. Well, when you got a three-quarter of an hour quarter, yeah, I would say. You as my father likes to say, did he gain an advantage? <laughs> and if he didn't, then you don't throw the flag. Yeah, I don't know. Well, this well one, if, if Mr. A said it, you tell him I'm, I'm buying in. If you don't gain an advantage, then... Don't fall. Don't throw the flag. Well, this one going to kind of wash out the earlier one, Steve. It's against the defense. They're going to put the ball up to the 40-yard line. Was it a late line. hit, Nick, coming in the pile late? I don't know what it was. It was thrown kind of after the tackle. Whatever so it was, it sure seems as if it was pretty incidental. First and 10 from the 40-yard line. Blitz off the edge. The throw is incomplete. Intended for Allen. Overshoots the freshman. Well... Who had the step. He had the step, but if you watch him early in his route here, Nick, if we see it, you'll see you've got to go full speed because it's all a timed route. Uh, we're not going to see it there. But uh, he did pick up speed in the towards the end. Watch. No, you're not going to see it there either. You may see it from the back. But wasn't going full speed out of the gate, sort of pacing down the field, but you know, when Ryder throws that ball, he's throwing it with the idea that you're going to be out of spot by that time. And uh, you know, he'll, he's a good receiver. He'll, he'll work that out. Second down and 10. More pressure here off the edge. Aubin calls his own number. 
And Fox will bring him down at about the 45-yard line after a five-yard game. Well, number 73, I don't know what his weight is, but he's well over 200. That's Fox. He's now That's got Fox. four tackles up front. Uh, yeah, give him credit because he took on Auburn coming right at him. And uh, he held on, made the tackle, and now you got third down and eh, five, five and a half here. It's a big play in the game right here. We'll see if Dover gets it off. We're down to five seconds. Auburn against a mystery front here. Puts Lewis in motion. Just barely gets the snap off or no? Oh, he got it off. They're going to whistle it dead. They also throw oh. a flag here. We see zeros on the game yeah, clock. That's delay of game. That's nothing to do with the clock, I think you'll see right there, Nick. I would assume that's delay of the game. Oh, no. False we'll start. start. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's the risk you may run trying to get that playoff last second. Yeah, yeah. And no, it cost over here another no need to do five that. yard penalty. Yeah, you're going between the third and the fourth quarter. Let it run out. Uh, talk to the coaches. Get a little break. Get your get your ducks in a row and come back out and, and make the play right then. No need to rush that play. Well, now the question is, are they going to add any time here, even a second? Nope, they're going to bring us to the yeah, end. They're going to bring us to the of end. Of the Boy. third quarter. How about this development here in Nashua? 49-35, a shootout to remember between BG and Dover. Do the Cardinals have enough to get over the finish line, or does Dover come back and wrestle the way, wrestle away the lead? We're going to find out. We are going to find out next. Fourth quarter on the other side. You are watching our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week presented by Beals Insurance. Our broadcast today, as it always is, is brought to you by Beals Insurance Agency, with locations now in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance will get you both the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Just call 603-471-9999 or visit BealsInsurance.com to request a free quote and start saving money today. Again, that's BealsInsurance.com. Got a third down and ten. Aubin on a rollout. And oh, nice he's got a man open. It's Lewis. Catch made by the freshman for a 12-yard pickup. And a first down. Tackled across midfield at the BG 48-yard line. And Nick and ask this Steve Beals with you. It's our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week presented by Beals Insurance. Dover fighting now two enemies, BG and the clock. Yes. Trailing here by two scores, 49-35. They're going to hustle to the line of scrimmage and throw another quick pass on first and 10. It's caught by the tight end, Carberry. He's going to twist and turn his way down inside the 35 before he's finally brought down at about the 31-yard line. A pickup of 17 there through the air as Dover continues to drive. Uh, there's no back down here with a green wave, Nick. They're, they're coming out here looking to score again. They, they realize... That is a very good chance the winner of this game could be the last one that touches the ball. But in order to create that environment, they've got to go down and score here. First and ten. And then make a defensive stop. It's been a back and forth shootout tonight between the eight seed and the nine seed. This yeah. one incomplete. BG, after a six and three regular season, earned themselves a home game here, taking on an unfamiliar foe in Dover who wrapped up the regular season with a 5-3-1 and one record. Yeah, I, I, to me, uh, uh, Ryder had a lot of room to run there. Uh, surprised he didn't just tuck that and run with it. He's just such a good runner, Nick. I mean, yes, there was space with the receiver, but uh, Auburn had a, had a really good lane there off tackle to, uh, to continue uh, keeping it. That brings up second and ten. Aubin with a hard count, looks to his left, two receivers out there, four-man front, handoff, going into the teeth of the defense there is McGinnis on a dive play that brings him down close to the 25-yard line, call it a pickup of six to set up what looks like a third and four with now a minute in the books here in the fourth quarter. You want to know when I talk about getting through the hole quick, Nick, not worrying about waiting 10 minutes for a block to develop, 
McGinnis did just that right there, and uh, he helped his team. He got six yards, and they got two downs to, to get the first. Bailey is now the tail in the pistol. Lewis on the move. They hand to Bailey. He's got room. Looking for a block. Cuts it up inside at the 10. He's in. Stumbles near the goal line, and they're going to call him short. Wow. At about the one-yard line. I want to see this again, Nick. four-yard run there for Bailey, but he's stopped short of the end zone. So Dover's going to have to wait at least another play yeah, to get we're going to see it right here if, in fact, uh, the, you know, the officials have been right uh, oftentimes here on these calls, but I thought he got in. No, he was down. His elbow was down. Boy, are they on it. Well, what a great job. Longest great run call. from scrimmage tonight for Sincere Bailey, the senior. He saw that elbow down, and he, he nailed it. Here's a sneak for Aubin. Is he in? Yes, he yes. is. Touchdown, Dover. Second rushing touchdown of the night for Ryder Aubin. And we've got ourselves a one-score game yet again, 49-41. I think Coach Kumba's got to be pretty proud of the tenacity of his team, Nick. Uh, playing away uh, and, uh, you know, coming off a loss to uh, Exeter last week uh, as the final game of the season and coming back and just airing out the pigskin here and on the ground, in the air, and... Uh, going to be if we can get this you got a one score game folks Johnson's kick is good and it's going to be a, a big part of this is going to be what Dover can do they're going to have to make a stop in order to get this thing back even at some point certainly if not this one the next time they get the ball they're going to have but they really want to get a stop Nick right now get the ball back get a tie score and get inside. You got to make sure that DBG is feeling pressure too. That they know you're coming from behind. It kind of changes the dynamic of a game where no longer you're just kind of sitting on a lead and rolling the millstone downhill. You got to create some adversity for BG and kind of get in their heads a little bit if you're going to make a game out of this. So this defense right now for the Green Wave, they've got to go out there and get it done. If they don't, uh, and BG gets it back, there's a you know. But this is the time right now. If you're going to take over a game, this is the time to do it. Well, each possession becomes bigger than the one it before. It really does. And with now nearly two minutes gone by in this fourth quarter, the clock is starting to become a factor. Nick and Asked is Steve Beals with you. Second part of our playoff doubleheader earlier tonight here at Stello Stadium on Friday Night Lights, New Hampshire. We saw Nashua North down Auburn, uh, Alvern rather, by a score of 27-14. Breaking left side. This is the sophomore Dolan. He's had a good night in the return game here yes, for he Gert, has. and he's up to the 40 yard line. Another solid upfield move. And BG with good starting field position well, again, officially at their own 39. He gets a nice block here. Watch him as he chooses all the right lanes, by the way. He gets a nice block. Uh, you can't see it. Number 15 did a great job blocking as Bastiris. Blocking him out of the play and got him uh, got, got the ability for him to be able to turn that corner. Luca Reddy with the tackle, the sophomore. Yeah, special teams takes 11 players playing the game. First and 10. Got a bunch set and a direct snap to Ballesteri. His first carry of the night is still going as he ah. cuts it upfield, spins at the 40, still powering his way at midfield, and look at this. Still alive at the Dover 40. And finally brought down inbounds along the sideline at the Green Wave 36-yard line. BG sideline and student section loving it, Nick. They get a score down against him, and they come back. How about this young man? He came here to play tonight. Does a great job blocking for his teammate on special teams. What's he do? Comes back and makes that run the next play. Kind of like uh, what we saw from, uh, who was the gentleman's uh, name from uh, San from Alvern. Well, Steve, that one goes for 25 yards, and all 25 of them came after first contact. Yeah, that's a very good point. There's Ballesteri looking like a moose out Jonathan there. Jonathan Santana, same idea, just came to play tonight. Ballesteri earlier in the second half on the receiving end of one of two 70-yard yeah. touchdown passes from Mike McDonough. Yeah. And showing you what he can do in the run game there. Yeah, you can feel how bad both of these teams are. Want to beat each other and get into those corner finals when it when it really. Well, we got a flag down here. Looks like the back judge Nick Ryder threw the flag. It's down inside the twenty yard line. 
And it's going to be a penalty, I believe, against the Cardinals. Yep, I think you're right. It'll just be the second penalty against the home team since halftime. Now they're going to pick it up. Wow. We get the announcement from re referee Jeff Kleiner. They're going to pick that flag up, so no penalty. As we say, communication is good. Want to get it right? Two and a half gone by, fourth quarter. BG looking to pad their lead out in front, 49-42. McDonough, the back to his left, that's Holmes. Going to throw to the right side, and it's dropped by Franco, yeah. incomplete. Yeah, bounced into his hands. Came in a bit low. Yep. And it hits the turf, incomplete. Mm -hmm. So second down and 10 on the way from the Dover 35. Yeah, well... In the, in the One of the things that uh, BG may want to look at if they get down and they got, you know, a fourth and long or a third and they just can't get there and it's fourth down, you may see them try to kick a field goal to get separation, I guess, later in the game. Second down and ten. McDonough's throw. Oh, almost intercepted. down and incomplete by Barbary. number 11. Yeah, that's yeah. the shorthanded tight end on offense. Here on defense, almost came up with a pick on the second level. Yeah, you see him looking down on the tray. He'd like to have that one back, Nick. BG has not turned it yep. over tonight. Yep. Two giveaways by Dover, both in the first half. Well, Coach Nalen going to stay with that passing game, Nick. Third and ten. McDonough going to check the play sheet, which is attached to his left wrist. Five receivers. Four down linemen. A fifth comes in. The throw what? is there, but it's incomplete. What a defensive play after the catch. Uh-oh. That's not good. Shaking up is Shemansky, who's still down. Is that Shemansky or Franco? I believe that's uh, Shemansky, if I'm not mistaken. No, and it's actually Connor Leonard. Connor, Lennon. He is not. Uh, he's Connor Lennon yeah, he's landed pain. hard there. Could not reel it in. Almost made the over-the-shoulder grab. Good coverage on the play, but again, well. The Look, senior, who's also the kicker. I think you're going to see he's here. Down. He put the hammer on the arm. No. Oh, yeah, the knee. It just knee crunched. Yep, it crunched. Lennon's going to try to get up. Trying to get up. And is on his feet now. Well, that's a Walking good sign. very gingerly back towards the home sideline. That is a good sign, though, Nick, that uh, he can do that. It probably got wrenched. Well, that may throw, speaking of wrench, a monkey wrench into the special teams plan for for BG. Yeah. As you mentioned, a field goal may or may not have just been taken off the table. There you go. But I, I just like the idea. If you can't, obviously you want to get in the end zone, of course. You want to do everything you can to get there. But if you've got a fourth and, you know, and five or fourth and seven with this defense that Dover put out here in the second half, you may want to get build yourself a little cushion off to get outside of eight points. Uh, to, to force one more possession of Dover to, to get in and score. Fourth and ten, they're going to go for it. Yeah, they are. McDonough with Holmes to his left. Oh, so Three receivers, all left side. There's a wing back to the right side. Four down linemen for the green wave. They'll rush four. Back to throw McDonough. He's got time. He goes over the middle. Catch is made. It's Ballesteri. He's got it. He's got the first down. Able to spin to his left. Pick up that extra yard for an 11-yard pickup. And BG will continue the drive of the first and ten. And a sigh of relief out there in the crowd. You can hear the ooh and then the claps. Sigh of relief knowing how important this is in this situation for them to be able to maintain possession, get a first down, Nick. But it uh, be interesting to watch what happens here with the kicker. And now here's that bunch formation on yep. offense, that power set that we saw at the tail end of the first half. They're going to run a wing back up the middle. Uh, Coach. I can't even tell who that was. Coach Trishiani was teasing me by text saying BG double wing. Uh, Coach uh, Trishiani Sr. Watch, obviously, tuning into the game. Big fan of the double wing. Yeah. Has uh, so many things you can do with it. But uh, kind of an interesting change. I mean, guy used to do that is with a T and the spread. Was, uh, Coach Mike Bellevue used to do that all the time and trick up defenses. Yeah, Coach Bellevue really could go from one end of the offensive spectrum to the other. Yeah, he could do it, yeah. And, and the they practiced of, it. In the they span practiced of two it. plays. And they, and they were effective. Got a flag and here late, meanwhile. There's uh -oh. a PG player shaken up and a penalty also on the way. It comes with four minutes gone by in this fourth quarter. 
It's been a penalty-filled night tonight. Yeah, boy, has it ever. Dover has had eight penalties against them. BG with five. And let's see what this one is about here. Looks like they're talking to the defense of Dover, or they, is he talking to his associate official there? You get a look at the replay. There's the McDonough carry. I don't know what they would. Uh, Hard to tell where the whistle was as yeah, well. Yeah. This could be a late hit, maybe. Didn't see a grab in there. Well, let's see what referee Jeff Kleiner has to say. Unnecessary roughness is the call. Is that on Dover? Against Dover. Wow. That's got the Green Wave fans who made the trip from the Seacoast yeah, upset happy. here at Stello Stadium. And some of the boos start to come down from the far side of the field. That's a costly penalty there, Nick. Half the distance, about 10 yards. Go back to the double wing here. Man is in motion. They hand to him. That's Fayed. Another, Another flag, flag on the way. Fayed is tackled near the line of scrimmage. No gain, but let's see what the penalty is. Wow. And Dover able to crowd the box and hold the runner to no gain. But this may be... Against BG, I think. Yes. Now a mock cheer coming from the Dover fans. So... Jump block. Two, two laundry machines filled up with fabric, Nick, tonight. Let me tell you, this is <laughs> this is unbelievable. And Just the uh, second penalty of the second half against the Cardinals. You know, and the funny thing is I would hardly call this a sloppy game. I mean, this is this has been 49-42, just prolific offense on both sides of the ball, but caught in the middle of it all is just all these infractions that just go back and forth, and it's just slowing the game down to a snail pace. Yeah, we're at well over two and a half hours now in yeah. real time. BG hanging off the uh, double wing. I don't know if that was a to cut time out of the clock or what. I believe it was. Going to go tight end right side here. They're going to throw left, and it's incomplete. That yeah. went into traffic there. Lewis on the coverage intended for Ballesteri. This is a little risky, Nick, to be uh, passing the ball in these tight areas. Um, BG falling into a little bit of a trap here where it's pass, no run. Right. And when that happens, the, the, the def it favors the defensive backs in a way that, uh, that provides um, uh, Dover to, to, to play less of the field and tighten down. Right. You've got to establish a run here of some type. They have the runners. Uh, this is second and goal, by the way, from the 21-yard line. They're going to throw into the end zone. What a and that pass. is a perfect pass. Unbelievable. And the catch is made by Ballesteri for a 21-yard touchdown. BG back in front by two scores. Yeah, that's why. 55-42. That's why I say, Nick, don't get caught up in all these flags. This is hardly a sloppy game. This is, a, this is two offenses playing precision football right here. You could not throw a pass any better than that one was. I also like the route fading out. Very difficult for the defensive back to cover. And he just dropped it with a perfect arc and a perfect angle right into the breadbasket. The, 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 the touch and the finesse of that pass is something to see. And how about Ballesteros, Nick? The game that that man is playing in so many different ways, special teams, offensive pass routes, big plays on defense. This guy has been a huge factor tonight in BG success. Roland Ballesteri. Ronin. Ballesteri. Ballesteri, the Bedford native. Yep. Actually played basketball with his father, believe it or not. Really? All-around athlete. Well, I bet you he's good. Two-year starter. And how about the big second half he's having? Had a 70-yard touchdown grab. Made a big fourth down grab to keep that drive alive. And fittingly, he caps it off with a 21-yard touchdown Yeah, but catch. it's the other things he's done. How about the lead blocking he's done? This, kid's not an this is not a selfish player. This is a guy who just gives it out, and he's talented no matter what he does. And he's got a great head on the field, and he makes great decisions. I can't tell you how many blocks that he was involved in when they were running the football of how effective it was. How about some of those inside seams being able to block on those for his teammates? 
He, he's a very unselfish, highly talented football player, and he's grown throughout the year. You've seen him check into more plays and uh, obviously well, listening to what he's being trained and putting it to uh, bat on the field. Earlier today, Salem and Spalding put up a combined 89 points. Wow. We are now at 98 combined here, still with 722 yeah, to this go. Yeah, is, this is just unreal. So if you're a fan of offense, this is the game you want to watch. Yeah, Dover has to, pretty much has to score here. McDonough, ooh, or rather Lost McGinnis, excuse me, over the 30, slips. Had a seam there, but slips at the 33. And is stopped by the gunner, Joe Rinley, or Joe Riney, rather, the senior for BG. Been looking for Cole Lennon. I have not seen him. He out kicked there. the extra point. Okay, so he's. It was great to see him get back up and not have to take weight off that knee and work it through. He's still down there though on the sideline. That's line what I a, said. Yeah, with a bit of a limp, kind of following the trainer yeah. around. But he did, however, kick that extra point. Well, and he remains perfect tonight. By the he, way, on extra point drives. Such. A, think about that for a sec. Both both kickers, right? Yeah. Yeah, have been perfect tonight. Yeah, we have so, not seen a miss. Great job. And they've gotten plenty of work, as we know. Yes. All right, Dover. Still fighting here. Trailing by 14. Aubin on a play fake, looking for Allen. He got a it. Juggling catch is made by the freshman. Took a pretty good hit in the back there from the defender, Franco. Able to hang on, and that is close to a first down. Well, Steve, earlier, become a subscriber. Yeah, we've got over 300 watching live, 300 devices. We appreciate that. And, Steve, earlier tonight, we passed half a million views for the channel. Wow. According to our director, Ben Beal. So, half a milestone, a million. over half a million since we founded the channel a few years back. Meanwhile, Ryder going to air it out incomplete. Nope. Leaping attempt there by the lanky freshman, Allen. But that one overshot incomplete. Second yeah. and ten coming up. You're not at a point where you need to throw the ball 40 yards down the field, Nick. What you've got to do is move it. Uh, what, you, what you're going to expect here is in kind of the opposite of what just happened there. You know that BG is going to start playing a little softer. So that's going to open up opportunities underneath to move the ball down the field 10, 12 times, 15 yards of whack. And there's plenty of time if your defense can stand and hold BG one more time. Again, the Cardinal fans stomping on the bleachers here at Stello Stadium. This one is dropped in the flat, yeah, wow. incomplete. Well, we have not seen many mistakes tonight from Sincere Bailey. Yeah. The senior running back, but he took his eye off the ball there, and it costs his team. Yeah. Incomplete, third and ten. Yeah, running, you know, like the idea of running more of a high percentage play, uh, Nick, but that one just seemed to be rushed a little bit uh, off of the line of scrimmage. you got to just calm down, recognize that you're not – with, with 6.44, you got plenty of time to get down there in two or three minutes. And uh, you've got three timeouts left, I believe. And uh, so it's, it's it, this isn't something you got to – what you want to do is get the next score and have your defense stop them and have a shot. That's what you want, to tie Third. it up. Third and ten, Aubin out of the gun. Four-man rush, steps up, eyes downfield. Going to tuck and run now, looking for the 50. He got a slice his down. way to BG's 45, and he does have enough for the first down. A 12-yard gain on the scramble. It's yeah. going to keep Dover's drive going here in yeah. BG territory, officially at the Cardinal 44. Yeah, I let Ryan do this, uh, Ryder do this more. Uh, it, it, he's such a good runner. He runs with power. He chooses good lanes. He's got high ball, uh, high, uh, ball security off the charts. Um, doesn't fumble the ball. He's got him on the wing. There he is. On first and ten. Open in the flat is McGinnis. Maneuvers around the midfield. Yeah. Sorry, the sideline. Spins down inside the 35. Now just go get your play. Get your team lined up. They should be ready to go. You have loads of time if you can score here and stop BG, as we keep on saying. No need to be rushing or taking wild chances. Get it within striking distance. Put it in the end zone. Get your defense ready. It's a gain of 12. And now another empty set here. Five receivers for Dover. We're midway through the fourth quarter. Green Wave hoping to make it a one-score game again. Aubin trying to escape the pocket. Maintains his balance. Now in a full sprint here, and he's tackled That's from behind by Sam Ronzio. Don't ever underestimate 
the significance of that defensive catch from behind there, Nick. I don't know. That was some pretty good speed I saw there. That's Ronzio's third tackle. And it's a two-yard gain for Aubin. What a terrific play. What a terrific defensive play. Well, he's tackled inbound, Steve, which means that clock continues to tick yes. as yep. we approach five minutes. Yep. Dover's got to be conscious of the boundaries here. Another blitz from the Cardinals. They're going to rush six here. Early throw is up for grabs and intercepted. Yeah. Ballesteri with the interception at the five-yard line. There's a flag on the play as he goes up the sideline, steps out of bounds across the 30 at the 33. But, again, there's a flag back yeah, down the, at the 40-yard line. Going to be a personal foul, I believe, on number 67, Nick. I believe. On which team? And the, of, uh, of Dover. Uh, there was some chattering going back and forth well be, uh, way away from the play. That's Toby DeRoche, who does look upset as yeah. he heads to the Dover He was sideline. really frustrated when he saw that flag go up. I don't know, but he's frustrated with, you know, sometimes in an exchange, it's the guy that does it last that gets caught. Right. And I think that was kind of a, a little bit of both jarring back. And uh, that's the third personal foul tonight against Dover. Yeah. Another 15-yard penalty. And now BG with a 14-point lead on the board. Less than five minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. They've got the ball back yeah, and are really now in a sweet spot. It's too bad. Uh, he's played a good game, solid game tonight yeah. uh, for, the, for the green wave. But I do believe that it looked like mutual chatter going back and forth and the, uh, the ref kind of looked over when, it was being, when the response was going on and that hurts a little. How about 95 yards in penalties tonight for Dover? Yeah, that's 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 a that, that's a factor in this game, Nick, for sure. You get 95 yards, you know, basically a whole football field of penalties. Only 41 on the other side yeah. for BG. Yeah, which is more even on, for a high flag, uh, high infraction game. This is uh, 100 yards is still a lot, Nick, for one team. Yeah, at any level. At any level, eight yard pick up there for Holmes. And he might be the so-called closer at this point, yeah. Steve. He's the big back, the junior. As Coach Nalen, I think, has one eye on the clock here, hoping to grind down the final four and a half minutes. Well, you can imagine. Holmes going to stay in to the right of McDonough, who's in the gun on second down and two. Dover's going to crowd the line with five linemen. They fake the handoff. They keep it with McDonough, and he's lucky to pick up a yard there up to the 45. That is close to the first down. But I think he's still short. Yeah. I think so now I think the question in Coach Kumba's mind is, at what point do you start to call your timeouts? He's got all three remaining. But BG's about to take this clock down inside of four minutes. I, I think we're uh, at looking at this point, Nick, at a uh, at, at a uh, try to move the ball quickly downfield, and then you're going to – they're definitely looking at onside kick. Unless something unique happens here – it's going to take you a certain amount of time to get down the field. The clock's still ticking right now. I think I'd probably save you timeout. At least one timeout I would save. Keep it in the book. <clears throat> Until it hits about two minutes. And But BG and obviously percentage have gone way through the roof now for for BG to... Uh, to come out victorious, uh, the percentage have gone way up with that interception. Another quarterback but sneak not here over. on third and inches. Bishop Gerton is going to pick up a first down. Yeah, that's that. That's going to now you're going to be and Gerton's going. Gerton's going to slow this game down. It's a rare rush attempt for McDonough, who got the party started way yep. back. Seems like yesterday. Yep. At this point, with that 16-yard touchdown run in the first three <laughs> minutes of the game. <laughs> Again, double eye, and now the Cardinals obviously in no hurry. As McDonough. Double wing. What did I say? Double eye. Oh, <laughs> double eye. Well, here's a, another nice run by Holmes on the counter. It'll blast his way across midfield down to the Dover 46-yard line. And yeah, you I can think Dover just used their first time out here. They did. Yep. Yeah, and uh, you can, stop you it can see some of the to go. You can see some of the shoulders shrugging here, Nick, as they feel it slip away. I really believe they, uh, from what I talked to some folks, they had a good week of practice, um, and they came in here to win this game. But uh, 
Both quarterbacks deserve all the credit in the world, but BG's had some individual effort from some underclassmen. Uh, yeah. and, uh, th- a lot of sophomores stepped up. A lot up. of sophomores stepped up big time. And I would say that the offensive line, uh, both offensive lines did a terrific job, but BG had less, a lot less penalties uh, from, uh, you know, called against them um, at, at times where they needed a clean play. If you look at uh, Dover, they had some penalties in the first half there that really were costly uh, to them, to, to, and they had to kind of play from behind ever since. Second and three, McDonough going to spin to his left and roll his way close to the first down marker down he's to about it. the 42-yard line. I think he's got it. As you said, Steve, it's not official yet. No, they're going to – it's a tough spot there. They're going to say short. Yeah, I thought he I thought he broke the marker, but his knee may have been down. I don't so know. So third, and it looks like two inches here on the way. Yeah. Dover is going to use their second timeout to stop this clock. Half a million views, my man. Yeah, that's good stuff. Uh, that is a milestone. We certainly hope you're enjoying uh, watching our broadcast tonight. If you haven't become a subscriber, by all means, go on to FNLNH Media on YouTube. Yep. And... Uh, I don't know how to finish it, Nick, because you're the guy that <laughs> you always You were doing so it. well there. Well, I, I, I hit a block there. But <laughs> anyway, go on, become a subscriber. Hit the bell icon. Right. And we do not send any junk. The only thing that we send is notifications to you. Uh, when, when we're on the air. When we're on the yep. air. No, none of that other stuff. So we're very respectful of your time and your smartphone, et cetera. Uh, but, but you want to be in the know. You want to be in the know. Especially at this time of year as we head into the quarterfinal round. We're right. back on the air Thursday night with FNL Gridiron. And then next week the quarterfinal coverage continues. All right. This is Fayed. And he's yeah, going to go out of bounds. Does not want to go out of bounds there. Wants to just go down inbounds. Burn another 40 seconds. But the it doesn't matter. He got a first down anyway. So yeah. he did a good job. But yeah, you do want to go down inbounds there after you. He may not have known he had a first down until he uh, he pushed it, but uh, a pretty good run there. Pretty good run is right. He's played well on both ends. Yeah, he wasn't much much he could do there. <clears throat> good tackle there by, as they say, just saying, Jake Bernier. It's a big first down, which I'm sure Coach Nalen will take. Yep. Meanwhile, a spin here. Jacob Magnum with the tackle, senior D end, and now Coach Kumba is going to use his final timeout here. Yeah, if they get a first down at this point, Nick, it's going to burn fast now when you run out of timeouts. Yep. But uh, 2.41 to go. Reminder after the game, take a quick break. We'll recap. And... We'll try to get through this scoring summary. I'll try to read it as quickly as I can, but it is quite lengthy. As you can tell, a 56-42 game will tend to do that. Yeah. So we got a scoring summary, a recap, stats, highlights, analysis, and a look ahead as well as we revisit the out-of-town scoreboard. Absolutely. So a lot to get to here coming up in the post. Five games will go over uh, the end of the uh, post-game show here. Busy and, Saturday uh, statewide. All right, Dover is out of timeouts. BG facing a second down and 10. He's going to drop back McDonough. He's going to oh, wow. throw it to Fayed, and that went incomplete. Really surprised they threw the ball at that point, Nick. Going for that the ball jugular, gets, I suppose. Yeah, I, well, I mean, but the, <laughs> but the bad things can happen out of that as well. Yeah. With 236 left, you get an interception and a run back. Now you're in a situation where instead of having an onside kick, I mean, you have an onside kick and you recover. Uh, you don't have any timeouts, but you got a shot. So, a little unconventional. A little unconventional, but you know the way the BGs played tonight. Take nothing away from the staff here of what they've been able to accomplish against a very good uh, Green Wave uh, football team. And um, it's it you know it's been a broad broad commitment from a lot of other players besides the guy the names you always hear about with BG. Short pass underneath. Not sure if that was a screen or what, but Holmes pulls it in. Tackle is made inbounds. And as we tick down towards two minutes, it's a fourth down and eight after that two-yard hookup between McDonough and Holmes. Well, what does 
Coach Nalen want to do here. He's going to keep the quarterback out there. Yeah. He's going to go back to the spread set. See maybe a pooch punt? I don't know. We used to see that last year with former quarterback Matt Sanisuazo. Wouldn't surprise me. They're going to throw instead. McDonough is going to step up. That throw is on target. Shemansky with another leaping catch. Well, you live by the throw. You die by the throw, but throw tonight. I'd so. say they're living large. Uh, a 19-yard pickup there through the air, and that yeah. should just about do it oh, as we're I, down to a buck 45. Yeah, with no timeouts, it's going to be very difficult. They pretty much could just kind of sit on these things, Nick, and run out the clock. I think you can take a knee at this yeah, point. Yeah, you can take a knee for sure. McGinnis with another tackle, his third on the defensive side of the ball for Dover. Yep. Got that double wing set. McDonough. See if he wants to drop back here a bit and maybe just drop the knee. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna put some uh, Cardinals gonna wings talk in about front it. of them there. And, yep. uh, it's victory just, formation here. Yep. As BG is gonna outlast Dover in a shootout to remember 56-42. Looks like is going to be our final score. Yeah, I mean, outlast is a good statement, Nick, because for the vast majority the body of this game it was uh one score tie two score one score i mean uh and then just you know somebody at, at some point is is got a hold and uh bg uh that interception down the other field there i think nick was uh, i mean it was going to be difficult for at that point for the green wave to pull it out even at that point but however they certainly had time to do it and that interception pretty much uh kind of sealed the deal there so Give BG a lot of credit for what they've been able to do this year. They're, they're going to go to Pinkerton. Not going to be an easy task, but they're into the quarterfinals. Green Wave, on the other hand, put out a heck of an offense, Nick, but just couldn't run in the uh, second half. Uh, every time they got within one, BG would score and make it to a two-score game. Right. We'll talk about that at the end. But What a game. BG, they're back to the quarterfinals. For the third consecutive season, this time they do it under the guidance of first-year head coach Anthony Nalen. What a job As they he's done. eliminate Dover in the preliminary round. The Green Wave had a successful regular season, but it's one and out for Coach Kumba's club, despite their best effort here on the road. So it's all chalk, at least for the first round, as the home team wins all five of all the preliminary five. games. This afternoon. I'll venture to say you don't see that most of the time. I mean, all five, five and zero oh on the teams with a higher seed. And uh, now the the uh, the plot thickens yeah. as we go next week. We'll talk about that afterwards. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, we'll take a quick break. Come right back here to wrap this one up. 56-42. BG, a winner over Dover. You are watching our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week presented by Beals Insurance. Our broadcast today, as it always is, is brought to you by Beals Insurance Agency, with locations now in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance will get you both the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Just call 603-471-9999 or visit BealsInsurance.com to request a free quote and start saving money today. Again, that's BealsInsurance.com. How can you reach your team's fundraising goals at no risk and no cost? MG Sports offers a variety of products to make your team's fundraiser a success. Their products include tickets and discount cards to hundreds of local businesses. MG Sports now is a digital platform where athletes can raise funds in the comfort and safety of their own home. Don't waste another season. Raise more funds than ever before and become another football program in New Hampshire that sets fundraising records every season. MG Sports, fundraising made easy. Visit MG sportsfundraising.com to start raising money for your team today. The New Hampshire Tomahawks promote the highest level of club lacrosse competition, not just in the state, but in the country. Looking to get recruited? Director Chris Cameron keeps an open dialogue with the nation's top college lacrosse coaches. Over 400 New Hampshire Tomahawks alumni have played at the college level, including the ACC, Big East, Big Ten, Ivy, NESCAC, NE10, and more. New Hampshire Tomahawks coaching staff has over 100 coaches, including current high school varsity and college coaches. The Tomahawks offer training for players of all ages, clinics, camps, and leagues, along with spring, summer, 
summer in fall elite teams. So play with the best. The New Hampshire Tomahawks, showcase and development for college lacrosse. Visit NewHampshireTomahawks.com and girls.nhtomahawks.com. Hey, I'm Chad, the owner of New Hampshire iPhone Repair. We're New Hampshire's most trusted and affordable repair shop for your iPhone, iPad, iPod, and even Android needs. Don't worry, we're affordable, reliable, and we back our parts with a lifetime warranty. And do you know what the best part is? No, what? We can repair your phone while you wait. I know, that's why I'm here. Oh, I know, Mrs. Green. Here's your iPad, good as new. Bring your phone into New Hampshire iPhone Repair today. Buy local and save big. For over 26 years, Spectrum Monthly has been providing great local offers from businesses in New Hampshire and Massachusetts. Delivered to your mailbox every month, Spectrum is chock full of savings from your favorite businesses. From local restaurants and retail stores to entertainment, fitness, and home improvement services, you'll have easy access to thousands of dollars in savings, including exclusive offers for Spectrum readers. Every month, enter our readership contest for a chance at winning cash and local gift certificates. Spectrum Monthly. No one brings you better offers. Oh, what a game. One to remember here in Nashua is BG in a shootout. Advances to the quarterfinals following a 56-42 win over Dover. This one began, well, way back, three minutes into the game. Mike McDonough, 16-yard touchdown run. BG a 7-0 lead. A.J. Holmes followed that up on the ensuing drive with a 53-yard pick six. And just like that, BG led 14-0 midway through that first quarter. Dover in the final two minutes. Got on the board. Ryder Aubin, a one-yard touchdown run, 14-7 at that point, heading into the second quarter. Then Dover tied the game at the midway point. Aubin to Brady McGinnis from 22 yards out. See you next week. 14 apiece at that point. BG would return the favor. McDonough, a two-yard touchdown run. Part of a great effort tonight by the senior quarterback, 21-14 BG. At that point, the next play, the kickoff, was brought back to the house. A 91-yard touchdown return by McGinnis. 21 all, two and a half to go before halftime. Final minute, McDonough hooks up with Cody Shemansky. From 22 yards out, BG retakes the lead into the locker room. At that point, 28-21. They find a cushion in the first 90 seconds of the third quarter. McDonough to Ronan Ballesteri. A 70-yard big play. Made it 35-21. Aubin responds with a seven-yard touchdown run for Dover to make it a one-score game. That went early in the third quarter. Then it's BG again with a magic hookup. McDonough to Shemansky, another 70-yard strike, 42-28 at that point. Dover responds. Aubin hooks up with the freshman Ben Allen from 43 yards away, 42-35. Final minute or so of the third quarter. It's A.J. Holmes, untouched on the ground. A 29-yard rush to the house made it 49-35 Cardinals after three quarters. Fourth quarter begins. Dover, find magic again. Aubin, a one-yard touchdown run. Again, it's a one-score game, 49-42 at that point. But B.G. has the last laugh as McDonough finds Ballesteri from 21 yards away this time, 56-42, and the final seven minutes and 22 seconds are scoreless. Cardinals win it. Final score, 56-42. It'll be BG against Pinkerton from a rematch, in a rematch from earlier this season. That game will be played on Saturday, a week from today, in Derry. Not a fun place to play, but let's talk about tonight. Uh, BG uh, finishes on a high note. Um, there were many times that this uh, very prolific Dover offense uh, really made it difficult. Uh, was it, they didn't make it easy for BG in, unless they were able to to top what Dover was doing along the game, and they did that. They answered back, and I, I just think that one of the key uh, components tonight, Nick, is the, is the defensive play by the BG uh, uh, defensive backs and the offensive play by the offensive line, providing Mike McDonough the time that he needed for his great receivers to create uh, to, to run good routes and let them develop to the point where there was a there was one specific play where he had that check down looking out as if he was going to throw it out on, to the left uh, uh, out to the side towards the sideline and then he hits I think it was Samansky or was it Ballesteri down the field I can't remember who uh, uh, for a touchdown down to the uh, end that was just precision Mike uh, you know vintage Mike McDonough right there of all the little things that he does well 
And uh, one thing that I will tell you is the I, I saw this BG. We saw them early. Been kind of following what they've been doing. And I got to tell you, whoever is the office talking to Jason Roby before uh, in the break, uh, whoever is the offensive line coach, uh, they deserve a lot of credit. For what for the sort of technical capability of of, of uh, proficiency that these young men have developed throughout the season, and a lot of these guys are young fellas, and they're going to come back and they're going to start at that level for next year. Uh, if you've got an offensive line and you've got a great quarterback and some receivers, uh, but it's it's all the other stuff that goes into it. Nick, uh, I, I give Coach Nailin a lot of credit to come in, you know, first year. Took his group of guys. He, clearly, he has allocated everybody's in the right position, playing where they're supposed to play, and they're just they're, they're just uh, pretty much played a flawless game for the most part. And you know, for a game with that much scoring and that much offense on it, with that much you know tempo and everything else, to you know forty forty five yards, and with a with a referee with an official staff that was definitely out here to make sure every call was made. Um, pretty clean game on their part. So they go into Pinkerton. And um, if they go into Pinkerton and they can pass the ball and get out early, that's going to be critical for them because uh, this offense has got to score a lot of points. But uh, Pinkerton's going to be a tall task, uh, Nick. So I'll leave it at that. Some final numbers. Unofficial, of course. Let's start with Mike McDonough, the winning quarterback tonight. Two touchdowns on the ground, four in the air. Yeah. yeah. Not a bad night yep. at all. The beneficiary, more often than not, was Cody Shemansky. I've got him down for 10 catches, ha! 200 yards even, yeah. and a couple of scores. So so the gap between the second best battery in the state just widened. <laughs> I mean, this, and this, this pair is unreal. Let's not forget about Ronan Ballesteri yeah. either. What a game. Two grabs. I behind the lens. Did a great job for us. Some great here footage at Friday Night Lights, New Hampshire. Of course, the whole thing orchestrated behind the scenes by the man behind the curtain, the wizard of replay, our director, Ben Beals, back in the Beals Insurance Studios. You know, Nick, before we go, I just want to say congratulations, to Coke Kuma. Got his team in the playoffs. Those guys were had a prolific offense. I, 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 we kind of ran out of time there, and I thought the audio went off, but congratulations to the uh, Dover Green Wave. Yeah. Uh, another you know, winning season. Another winning sure. season. I'm sure they wanted to go further. Why wouldn't they? Yep. They're competitors. And uh, best of luck to uh, to, to, to Ryder Auburn and and, uh, and and all of those seniors yep. that are going to be moving on. So just all want right. to say that as well. All right. For executive producer Steve Beals, my name is Nick Anastas saying so long. Final score, final time. Bishop Girton, 56. Dover, 42. This has been a presentation of our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week presented by Beals Insurance.